Hello and welcome to a very special bonus video here on LRRMTG where we are getting to reveal the full deck of the Warhammer 40,000 Magic the Gathering Universes Beyond Commander deck, The Ruinous Powers. My name is Graham and joining me today we have Ben. Hi! And Cameron. Huh? And they are here because uh, I think you both have the strongest crossover of Commander and warhammer uh among folks in the crew uh yep. possibly i would say uh waiting more uh maybe ben is maybe a little bit more operating in the commander sphere but you know you got your kill team yeah, yeah. uh cameron's maybe operating a little more in the warhammer 40k but obviously plays a lot of <laughs> plays a lot of magic you uh you brought books i did for reference which is uh, i'm very excited about i thought you were gonna like leave it at like we brought the two people who know the most about 40K in the office. <laughs> Cam, who knows a lot about 40K, and Ben, who's played two games of Kill Team. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think you know a little bit more than that. I, I've, re I've recently started diving into the lore. A yeah. Bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm coming at this from, from a position of I very much enjoy both things, but I'm not as deeply invested in either of them as, as our panel here, who have also not seen the cards. This is going to be a brand new reveal uh, of all of this for them as well. Uh, and so I'm very excited about this. We're going to be going through uh, the whole set. We're going to start with the reprints and then we're going to move on to the cards that are brand new. Uh, it, this may be the first time that you're seeing all of this. I know that earlier today on day of airing, a small handful of the cards were shared online by some various other outlets, but uh, this is the full deck. We're going to be looking at every single card and even the reprints have totally brand new in Warhammer universe uh, art and flavor text. And so I'm, I'm very excited to just sort of, well, I mean, to look at them all with you, to share them with you, but then also to be like, now, one of you, please explain what's going on here. Uh, you know, is this, how exciting is this for Commander? What is going on here in the world of 40K? Uh, so come with us on this journey. Uh, so let's just start with the commander. The commander has already been spoiled, but let's let's talk about him a little bit. So this is the face commander of the box, Abaddon the Despoiler. Two blue, black, red for a 5-5 five, five Astartes warrior with trample. And you'll see uh, Mark of Chaos Ascendant. So similar to the Dungeons & Dragons set, they're using sort of flavor keywords for the mechanics of a bunch of these cards, which I, th which I think is very interesting. And I think that that works great in a situation like this because you get to just sort of inject more of the world's flavor into the cards sort of for free. Um, what that means in this case is during your turn, spells you cast from your hand with mana value X or less have cascade where X is the total amount of life your opponents have lost this turn. So I have a couple questions, and I'm going to start with the, the flavor end of things. This deck is called the Ruinous Powers, and this is their commander, Abaddon, Abaddon the Despoiler. Cam, can you tell me a little bit about who the Ruinous Powers are and who Abaddon is? Well, Graham. <laughs> In the universe of Warhammer 40,000, uh -huh. there is the Material Universe. So, you know, this is this is my Carl Sagan. If you want to build an apple or if you want to bake an apple pie from scratch, first you must invent the universe. Yeah, invent the universe. Right. Um so there's the material universe. And existing in parallel to that is the warp. Mm. And the warp is a universe of pure thought and emotion, and it's where all of our psychic presence is made manifest. Neat. So <laughs> inside the warp, you know, feelings are very real uh, and they kind of coalesce, right? You have like the concept of, uh, you know, uh, 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 if many people feel similarly about things, they will kind of converge into an entity right. that has its own agency. It's like a physical manifestation of that yes. concept or that feeling. Yes. So over time. Uh, many sentient species have had their presence leave marks in the warp, um, and these have coalesced into four major warp entities or gods of chaos. Right, because this is the the deck is the ruinous powers. Yes, which we would, in shorthand, have called this is the chaos deck. Yes, this is the chaos deck. Okay, cool. Um, so the ruinous powers are uh, here. They're being led by Ezekiel Abaddon, 
the Despoiler, mm. who was formerly the first captain, I think, of the Luna Wolves Legion Astartes. And he was the progeny of of Horus? Uh, I think there is, like, he, he looks a bit like Horus. He looks quite a lot like Horus. It is rumored that he may be, you know, more strongly related to Horus than any of the other members of the of his legion. Um, but he was a member during the Horus Heresy. He or during the deep history of Warhammer forty thousand <laughs> ten thousand years ago, before the events that back led, when it was only thirty thousand. Yeah, War, Warhammer forty thousand or thirty thousand. Right. Um, Abaddon. A. a is it Abaddon? Abaddon or Abaddon? Abab- Abaddon. I'm going to keep saying Abaddon. Yeah. But it, I don't know. Uh, Abaddon. Correct me mm. if we're wrong, yeah. Uh, he was the, uh, there was an organization within the Luna Wolves, which was Horus, the war master right. of the Horus heresy. Uh, that was the legion he led. There was an organization within it called the Mornival, which was composed of four, the four most pros- uh um, 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 not prosperous, uh, uh, toughest, just, strongest, yeah, yeah the most the trusted oh, okay. of Horace's captains. Um, and they kind of were responsible for, you know, counsel in diplomacy, in warfare. Um, and each of them brought something different to the table. Uh, and they were each associated with a phase of the moon hmm. because, you know, the Luna wolves were raised from Luna first. Um, I want to say, and uh, Abaddon was associated with the full moon, I believe, and each of them was also kind of associated with one of the humors. If you're familiar with the humors, oh yeah, like personalities, right, 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 like sort of um, uh, Dark Ages medicine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, like, oh, you got too much, you got too much bile and not enough colic. <laughs> if you were to look at this man and imagine what his personality is like, uh. Fairly aggressive, probably. Yeah, yeah he yeah. seems angry. Yeah, yeah, choleric. Yeah, yeah, was, definitely. Was a bad. So the Chaos Space Marines used to be as as Abaddon is used to be regular Space Marines. Yes, and then you know that I was going to say good guys, and that's not an accurate yeah, no, description no, of no. any part of the. There is no no one's good in this universe. Yeah, well, I mean, like it's an interesting question actually yeah. that I enjoy talking a lot about. Um, but yes, uh. Horus was named War Master. The Emperor returned to Earth in order to govern, and um, uh, Horus became Horus became corrupted by the ruinous powers <laughs> through a series of extreme coincidences that Lorgar, another one of the Space Marine Primarchs, and his his uh, lead priest Erebus had very little to do with. Mm-hmm. Very little, uh, very little to do with. Uh, but he got Horus got a boo boo. Mm. Um, and went on a spirit journey. And when he came back, he um, was uh, he had he was so full of other things. All right. <laughs> and Abaddon followed him into rebellion against the emperor. So it makes sense for Abaddon to be the the face commander of this particular deck. Yes, he is the one surviving member of the Mornival. Cool. And he leads what is now called the Black Legion. Good name for who it. Who were the? They are the survivors of what used to be the Luna Wolves Legion Astartes, which then became became the Sons of Horus after Horus was named War Master. Right. And then after the rebellion was broken, after the Hor- heresy was broken, I believe they became the Black Legion in mourning for Horus, who was killed by the Emperor. All right. Um, and he, uh, his job for the last 10,000 years has basically been trying to herd cats. <laughs> Um, in, he previously got kind of got a lot of flack for being an ineffective leader because, you know, he would... Well, you're you trying know, to lead the legions of chaos. Yeah, it, it's not an easy job. Yeah. It's turn, not an easy job. Turns out. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, uh, and he has maintained his independence of the ruinous powers. He commands them, but is not in thrall to them. Oh, that's which good. Which is not an easy thing. All right. So... From a commander perspective, yeah, this is a pretty wild ability. Hey, yeah, I mean, so Cascade is uh, up there in terms of power level. Yeah, in Magic the Gathering, I would put it 
very high up there. Um, and so, I'll tell you, it's not the only time it comes up in the Yeah, in the I cards imagine today. so. Um, yeah. Looking at this card, uh, I think myself and a lot of people instantly just recognized it as a very good burn uh, deck. Yeah. Um, if you think about it, just like even you start off with just Lightning Bolt, somebody, and now all your three mana spells have Cascade. Yeah, and it's it's not your next spell. It's yeah. any, any other spells. Any spells, yeah. That, that, hit that criteria. Yeah, so you can just keep going up the ladder if you want. The more you burn somebody, the more higher CMC your spells just have cascade. Oh, sweet. Yeah, it's super gross. You can do, I think, uh, a number of things in there. What is interesting, uh, at, at first, when I first saw it, I didn't see the, it's that your opponents have lost, and I was seeing like a really fun like self-burn kind mm. of a thing, you know, where you like thought sees somebody, and now right. that's two, and now you can keep going and stuff. So... But, uh, would this work with something that uh, each opponent loses life? Yes. It would sum that lost life? Yes. So, yes. So, the total amount. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you could, if, I mean, I, I even just like baby things, like you could play, play Gary. Right? Oh, yeah. And just like drain everybody for a bunch. And now, like, <laughs> yeah. Now, ostensibly at, at minimum, like if, if, even if you were just playing Gary with him on, that's, that's three black devotion. Mm -hmm. That's, Three life from everybody. So now you're nine CMC or less spells <laughs> cascade. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it's really interesting. And I mean, also very, very powerful for Grixis because not necessarily, I mean, red now a little bit now the treasures are such a big thing, but these aren't really ramp colors. Yeah. So cascade really, really helps out uh, this part of the color pie. Right. Um, in getting kind of more extra value. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, how do you feel, uh, Cameron, about sort of. Before we get into the into all the cards, which we will do for those of you who haven't skipped ahead, um, uh, how do you feel about Grixis as the color identity for for Chaos? I will say oh. there are only three cards in the deck that are mono blue. <laughs> Everything else is either red, black, I or multicolored. I would be really interested to see how blue is represented mm -hmm. and what colors or what aspects of blue are brought out here. Black clearly. Uh, the Runa's powers are all about um, greed and... And plague. Pl yeah, plague definitely is, is a facet there. Um, but, you know, the the uh, the darker aspects of black, you know, we see many different ways of expressing what black mana is about, whether mm -hmm. it is about um, uh, uh, restoration of things. You know, everything has to die eventually, yeah. right? Um, but black can also be the color of necromancy, of refusing to yield, um, of inflicting suffering. Mm. And red is also a color of aggression, but it's also the color of passion and kind Freedom. of unbound intellect. Yeah. Um, and there are still elements within the traitor legions who believe they are fighting for freedom. Hmm. Um, from an oppressive Imperium, but that freedom looks very different from what we might expect it to look like. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start with the reprints. And I'm going to start with the lands, specifically in the reprints. Uh, one of the most powerful cards ever printed, it's Island. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Just showing off, so there is, there's a new Island, Swamp, and Mountain. The mana base consists of uh, eight of each of those. And then some other lands that we'll show in a minute. But I just wanted to show off the the basics because they are pretty cool looking. Yeah. The swamp. Those plague flies? Probably. Like yeah. Some kind of plague flies, yeah. Shocking nobody, Nurgle is my favorite of the chaos gods. <laughs> oh, you're in, you're in <laughs> I'm for a, a big grandpappy Nurgle fan. You're, you're in for a treat. Uh, and then uh, Mountain. Mm. Yeah, sort of blood letters. Yeah, we got the corn boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Piles of skulls. Yeah. So... Equally unsurprising because we did have the Soul Ring spoiled, and we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. But of course, uh, we have a brand new command tower. Whoa! On the planet of sorcerers, in the Eye of Terror, lies the Tower of the Cyclops, the Redoubt of Magnus the Red. Ah! It says here in the flavor text, Magnus the Red is a demon primarch. Uh huh. Uh, former, the 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 primarchs were the genetic basis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time we believed that the primarchs were created by the emperor to lead each of the space marine legions right now it's looking more and more likely that the primarchs were something the emperor found and made meat bodies for oh, oh. that they're warp entities that's upsetting that um you know were kind of given a flesh form by the emperor to lead the space marine legions 
What a great use for it. So, uh, when, so when they go bad, why <laughs> is anybody like, man... How could this have happened? How could we have ever? Uh, yeah, how could we have ever foretold? Everyone who can answer that question is real dead right now. I guess this is just you know that it was because there were bad people the whole time. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. uh, Magnus the Red was the leader of the Thousand Suns Legion of the Legion of Startes, um, who were very psionically gifted um, and a little you know a little proud. A little, uh, you know, that they, they because they had the psionic gift, they were able to, you know, scry into the future and see things very clearly. And they saw that um, things were not going well. But the emperor, in his wisdom and his desire to create a strictly secular imperium that would be divorced from the warp, because that's how you deal with your impulses, is that you just pretend they aren't real. Uh huh. Um, decided to warn the emperor of the forthcoming civil war. And uh, Magnus, uh, in order to do this, went to Earth and broke some stuff that the Emperor had been working on for a long time, and which 10,000 years later uh, is still trying to fix. Um, and that was Great. very, very bad. And so the Emperor sent the Space Wolves Legion Astartes to, uh, d d d d d d to correct uh, censure the, uh, the Thousand Sons to death. Oh, to death. To death. Great. Um, so Magnus is a little peeved about this. What's what's that thing that looks like a space manta ray with too many teeth? Uh, that would be a disc of zinch, Graham. Oh, a dis disc of zinch. Yeah, awesome. They've, yeah, they've been, uh, they used to be more literal discs, but now they look. Oh, now mantas. they're mantas. Oh, yeah, like, I, I I'm pretty sure they're a disc. It's, that's what a disc of zinch looks like now. Cool. I mean. Neat. Yeah. Uh, so Magnus follows, is, is a demon prince of zinch who is the chaos god of change. Okay. Um, but is usually associated with knowledge and uh, curiosity and um, not really caring what you do to get those things. <laughs> Great. Uh, I mean, and hey, it's a new command tower. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, command tower cool. goes in every deck. Yeah. I, it, it is the easy, it is the best land in Magic the Gathering mm -hmm. <laughs> in Commander. <Yep. laughs> so I'll tell you, there's no new lands. So the rest of the land base is all is all reprints. And I'm just curious, can you think of any that would make sense to throw in here? So I, I would guess that they're not throwing in anything like um, that is specifically named to a like a guild or like something in universe. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm actually there are there are about, 11 more. Land I'm curious reprints. about gates. Um, gates could be cool. No gates. No but gates. But like, it'd have to be the gates that are not specifically like, is it guild gate and yeah. whatnot. I could definitely right. see things like myriad landscape and and ones that are like um, um, fixing lands, like similar to Evolving Wilds. Yeah, I could. I mean, I think Evolving Wilds would make sense. It's kind or of a Terramorphic stable. Expanse. Terramorphic Expanse for sure. Yeah. Uh, that that darn that would make sense. Those aren't in here either. Oh actually. man! All right, we're off the mark. So I'll just go. I'll just go through alphabetically sure. uh, the other ones. So we've we've got Baron Moor. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cycling which land. Is the cycling land. Millennia of constant warfare have left many planets with very little worth fighting for. Oh, the art on this. Is... Oh, the the quality of light on this. Yeah. yeah. What, what planet is this with its two two moons? It could be anywhere. Yeah. Very cool. Let's you'll, say this is Istvan Three. You'll notice uh, some of the art for. These cards are do have uh, credited artists like this one, um, and some of them, like Command Tower, are credited to Games Workshop. And I don't know if that means that it was done internally or if it's just art that they already had or what. But that, I'm not sure what the distinction is. But you may notice that as we go through. Yeah, just like, like past key art and stuff. Yeah. Next we have Cave of Temptation. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is taps for colorless. For one in a tap, add one mana of any color. And for four in tap and sacrifice, it put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. You can only do that one as a sorcery. Sure. So this one definitely seems like it's in here for, for flavorful reasons. Yeah, I think a lot of the, the fixer sort of lands that get like printed and whatnot, they, they fly so far below my radar mm -hmm. and whatnot. So mm -hmm. this is but this is this is cool. I mean, fixing is always neat. Got some uh dual lands in here. We've got choked estuary. Nice. Mm. So this is the, as it enters the battlefield, you may reveal an island or swamp from your hand. If you don't, it enters tapped and it taps for blue or black. Centuries worth of black iron lie beneath the soil of every imperial world, their civilization built on never-ending strife. So this, this, looks, this looks like a, it's, <laughs> the estuary is choked with guns, I think. I just 
plumbing. Yeah, just yeah. a lot, just a lot of crap just stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, these are these are probably some of the better uh, lands uh, in terms of that can come mm. in untapped mm-hmm. and install too. too. I'll tell you right now, we also have uh, foreboding ruins, yeah, which is the sense. other the the red black version. When the great rift opened across the galaxy, many imperial worlds were lost to chaos. Man, it says that's gorgeous. We also have a crumbling necropolis, which yep. seems mm-hmm. like that makes a lot of sense flavorfully. Just, yep. It's just nice to see this like reprinted. Yeah. So you don't have to keep digging into Alara. Yeah. Packs. So this, uh, <laughs> is this the first time it's been reprinted since Alara? I I or, mean, wait, it's this probably been... it's probably been in another commander deck. I'm not sure. James might be able to find out. Yeah, but... I want to say that this turned up again around the time of uh, Amoncat. Oh, maybe it did. An Amoncat. So this enters tapped and taps for uh, blue, black, or red, obviously. Maybe from like a supplementary set? Yeah. The squad but... plunged deep into Hive Pandorial, finding only the shambling corpses of those they came to avenge. Ugh. Gross. Yeah. Uh, this is an interesting one, flavorfully. Exotic Orchard. Yay! Oh. <laughs> so taps to add a man of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. It's got a couple kinds of anemone. Yeah. Oh no, that's those are Tyranids. Yeah. It's yeah. like a Tyranid back that's coming out of like a crevice or something. In the late stage yeah. of a Tyranid invasion, sessile organisms take root on a planet's crust, converting its resources into biomass that can be extracted by the hive fleet. Is this from the correct deck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I okay. guess it's like it's exotic in the way that it, it's like from the, the Tyranid yeah. stuff. That's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, Forgotten Cave sense. in the same realm as the uh, the mm-hmm. Baron Moor. Mm-hmm. Nice little cycling land in the hearts of mortals in the pages of ancient lore in the deep forgotten places of the universe. Chaos waits. Chaos. Uh, we also have the Molten Slag Heap. Yeah, the storage mm. lands. Yeah, so this is the Red Black Storage Land. So put a counter on it, load it up. A few more lands. We've got Swiftwater Cliffs. Ooh. Oh, I just oh. like looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In its attempts to, yeah, in its attempts to mirror Zinch's convoluted scheming, the crystal labyrinth constantly shifts and rearranges itself. I, what? I don't know what that is. <laughs> cool. But like, I mean, 40k used to be full of things that were just kind of like unexplained. Like you would see something on a, on a map and it would be like the lost mo- monolith of this. And you're like, when are we going there? And yeah, like, like, never. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just some words you thought look cool on a map and you figure it out. <laughs> Uh, and, and I feel like this one uh, makes a lot of sense flavorfully as well. Temple of the False God. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it taps for two colorless, but you can only do that if you control five or more lands. Chaos renegades always seek to deface and destroy effigies of imperial piety, replacing them with blasphemous symbols of the ruinous powers. So, yeah. Uh, hey, funny thing about some of the land is that, because uh, just the way that the cards were sent to us, at, I, I missed some things, including <laughs> no fewer than three lands that you've already mentioned by name that are indeed in the set, including Evolving Wilds. Hey, hey, we nailed it. So All right. yeah. you, you, I feel like that's a staple of the commander yeah. precon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now it's possible, I will say, because this has very some very tyrannity looking. It does it. look tyrannity. Uh, yeah. As you noted with Exotic Orchard as well, and it's possible that this is the art from the Tyranid deck. I don't know if Evolving Wilds is also in the Tyranid deck. It may be. I'm mm-hmm. not entirely sure. But uh, you were correct, not only with Evolving Wilds, but also with Terramorphic Expanse. Wow, they're Ooh. both in oh. here. Well, this, oh, that's, this is... Mm. <laughs> that is... The that is unspeakably sweet. The cicatrix <laughs> maledictum maledictum if... split the galaxy asunder. The raw stuff of chaos flooded into real space, transforming whole planets in moments. That is why wild... this yeah. the stuff that's going on in the fire. Yeah, uh, the cicatrix maledictum was the event that took place when the Cadian Gate fell, allowing the warp to spill into real space, splitting the galaxy effectively in two. Okay. Mm-hmm. Neat. Okay. Uh, you also mentioned, and I feel like this might also be f- art from one of the other decks. I'm not entirely sure, but you also mentioned Path of Ancestry. Ah, that mm. is also in this deck. Cool. Okay. I figured because yeah, it while it does come in tapped, it does everything else that mm. Command Tower does, and you get to scry. If yeah, uh, you have a creature type. Uh, this so. deck I should mention just for completeness also includes uh, Dismal Backwater, which mm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, oh, we... man, those poor sentinels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Armageddon so... has become a site of holy pilgrimage for the orcs, a planet where the fighting never stops. Is that just like, they're like, oh, yep. you, got, you got to see Armageddon yeah. at some point in your miserable orcish life. Yeah, yeah I, mean, the orcs... I mean, also, point of order, orcish life is never miserable. 
It's always awesome. That's true. The orcs are the only people in 40K that are truly happy. They're just yep. doing what they want to do. Yeah. 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 I would also say that the uh, Dark Eldar and some members of the Adeptus Mechanicus are just having a ball. <laughs> They're just yeah. having a great time out there. Yeah, I learned only recently of, I can't remember his first name, but his last name is like Damon Killa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah. like the orc who just like, he got his, he had a warp and like a, a warp shield malfunction on his uh -huh. ship and fought a bunch of demons and then went, whoa, these are way more fun to fight. And then just like became one of the like Damon Killinist orcs around. That's Awesome. Yeah, yeah he was just, just, he was like, just, yeah, it turns out humans are pretty boring when you can go fight like a bunch yeah. of these dudes. Instead of using the warp engine to travel someplace where you can fight things, what if we use it to travel someplace where we can fight things, but inside out? <laughs> we'll just turn it, we'll turn off the Geller field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that is so cool. Perfect. <laughs> I love orcs. Uh, and we also have, uh, to round out the uh, the fixing wheels, have a sunken hollow. Ah uh, yes. Okay. So, so all of the all of the 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 dual sort of lands in this. You you got you yeah. have your full tricycle. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So that's the lands. Uh, but now on to non land reprints. Uh, let's move into artifacts. So we did already see the soul ring. Each of these decks has its own soul ring, uh, with different art for each one. So this is the one for the ruinous powers. As Horus once besieged the soul system, we shall bring the rotting Imperium to its knees, says Abaddon the Despoiler. Uh, you can probably guess uh, at least one other artifact that will probably be in here, just because it seems like an auto-include. Arcane Signet? Arcane Signet? No, actually. Oh. No, but we do have Commander Sphere. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's okay. probably one or the other. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be one of those. So we've got yeah, three mana, uh, tab set, one mana of any color, sacrifice it to draw a card. Uh, I don't know exactly what we're seeing here visually, uh, but that it looks really the cool. the top of a staff. Yeah. Yeah. This is That's Magnus the Red's hand. Ah. There we go. Ah, yes, the arcane sphere that hovers near Magnus's staff imbues it with the power to transform enemies into mindless chaos spawn. Man, those are some nails. What fun! Time to go to the time to get a manny. I I can see this moving. <laughs> this is great. Art. Yeah. Now, uh, some good news here. I think you'll have you'll have to tell me. Hopefully, you're up to speed on this. But I believe that at least one of these hasn't been reprinted in some time. But we have some talismans. Oh, so we've got oh. Talisman of Creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So taps for colorless or red and blue, but it domes you for one. That's, That's a Zinch symbol. Flavor yep. text for some, for the book of Zinch. We have the Talisman of Dominance mm -hmm. with uh, the Saga of Corn. That is interesting. That Corn is represented by blue. Uh, yeah, blue and by blue black. Black. Yeah, huh. definitely would have pegged them as Rakdos. Yeah, red black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the Talisman of Indulgence. Black and red for Slanesh. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can see why they did that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Slanesh is very, uh, like very similar to Rakdos, like the yeah. like the actual Rakdos like yeah. guild and stuff. And I believe I looked this up before, but I forgot which one. At least at least one of these talismans. It's been some years, and I know that the commander uh, community has been waiting for a reprint of at least one of these for for some time because well, so. these were this was og modern horizons i want to say this when these were first oh because some of them right some of them are only yeah, some the, of them were only the, printed for the first time in that one wasn't mm -hmm. it yeah i want to say the oh god were the enemy colored ones first printed there and it was only allied colored ones that were from mirrodin yeah yeah, yeah. okay cool i think uh we also have a wayfarer's bobble <laughs> it's a heck of Whoa. a bobble. yeah that's a very very elaborate bobble <laughs> yeah <laughs> When Chaos makes a tool that isn't specifically for destroying things, it's usually for finding new things to destroy. We, yeah. So yeah. that's fun. Okay. I like, look, this is the, you know, Wayfarer's Bobble, like, the art is usually pretty, like, pretty spot. It's it's just some There's thing. There's a little, that a little the, trinket the, or Yeah, their whole yeah. thing. This is, this is my go-to Wayfarer's Bobble <laughs> yeah. print now. This is wicked. Mm. Uh, some more, some more brown mana, as some people like to call it. Worn Power Stone. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Enters tap. Taps are too colorless. Power okay. comes in many shapes, but real power does the shaping, says Abaddon the Despoiler. <laughs> I would have liked this to be Thought Vessel, but Worn Power Stone is still really good. I like mm. that a lot. Mm. Well, this one's some good news. This is uh, this is one of those. I think this is probably one of the spicier reprints in this particular set. We have Chromatic Lantern. Oh, nice. First of all, that looks very cool. Secondly, mm. hey, it's Chromatic Lantern. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, chromatic lantern is great. Uh, this actually, the the colors 
remind me of it's uh, very popular right now. I've seen a lot of painting videos for it of the flat paints. Um, they're that they're just like very like hyper violet colors oh, and stuff oh, okay. like that. Okay. Um, that look exactly like it's that exact color printed painted so nicely on miniatures. Ooh. And it's oh, I've seen a lot from uh, Dana Howell. Like, very cool. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and our last reprint artifact. I think this one's just sort of perfect. It's the assault suit. Yeah. <laughs> Big Terminator. Terminator yeah. armor. <laughs> Tactical <laughs> dreadnought armor. This is a reprint. Can you believe it? Yeah. yeah. Assault suit. It's a four mana artifact. Equipment, the equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, has haste, can't attack you or planeswalkers you control, and can't be sacrificed. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of equipped creature until end of turn if you do untap it and it equips for three. Interesting that then that this is a chaos uh, or a, a corn berserker terminator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, violence for its own sake. Just wants to fight. Yeah. Yeah. Blood for the blood god. Yeah, uh, the world eaters got a great deal out of the heresy. <laughs> the the part of your brain that normally has thoughts is has been replaced by a technology called the butcher's nails. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> great. <laughs> so our other reprints. This one's, I think this one's a very interesting include. Brainstorm. Ooh. Whoa! First of all, that art is amazing. Yeah. But yeah, good old brainstorm. Single blue mana, draw three cards, put two of them on your hand, put, sorry, put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order after you draw three cards. This is so much fun with cascading. Yeah. Love Abaddon. Yeah. Yep. You can really set up some really good stuff. Um, ostensibly too, brain like, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's probably some ways to shuffle the deck in, in there too. So brainstorm always gets way more powerful mm. in those instances. But yeah, just being able to, as you were saying, like, burn somebody for something and then set up a free <laughs> a free big spell yeah it yep. seems pretty good in this flavor text it says the changer of ways often sends glimpses of possible futures to his most loyal acolytes visions that would destroy lesser minds who's the changer of ways that would be Zinch. the chaos god zinch ah yep. great so much zinch stuff yeah so far we've seen a lot of at a zinch well i mean i'm ooh blasphemous act <gasps> yeah, that well, feels let's, like it would make it in. Let's move from the the only blue reprint into some black reprints. Bile Blight. That's there we are. I was wondering. Yep, there's my correct. nerdly friends. And that is Mortarion? Yes, Mortarion, yes. Primarch yeah. of the... Oh, it was written on the card. Yeah, it's, the Death Guard. But you got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, Mortarion, wow. Demon Primarch. So yeah, black, black, target creature, and all other creatures with the same name get minus three, minus three until end of turn. So very good against tokens, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bileblight was a house during Theros. Mm -hmm. um, and in Commander uh, is... A great card that usually is super underplayed, I would say, but just completely hoses token deck. Yeah. So yeah. now this next one, I don't actually know that this next card is good in Commander. Maybe it is. Okay. But I think it's a beautiful reprint for flavor reasons. It's Dark Ritual. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that's gross. <laughs> Praise Nurgle for the plague to have progressed so quickly. Truly, his blessing must be upon us, says K Goth Plague Father. And it's the ritual in this case is these three horrible bugs hatching out of a skull. Yeah. Yeah. We're great. just, we're, I mean, we're just making cool plagues, man. Yeah. Uh, dark ritual in this deck makes a lot of sense because of specifically, as you were saying, big cascades. Oh, yeah. Okay. And stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's like you, even on like turn, you know, like in, in like early turns and stuff like that, the, the fact that you can get some really quick, easy damage with your creatures mm. in and then ramp it like, you swing in on like turn two and you hit somebody for three, uh, you're already like able to, you know, now mm -hmm. dark ritual and this into something. Yeah. And, and get or, it. So or I see it. If you, uh, I guess you got to have power out. Abaddon out for the, his you, ability to trigger. Right. But still, yeah, still that's fair. Power out Abaddon in turn three. That's this. true. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> five, five trample. Yeah. yeah. All right. right. He's got two generic mana in his casting cost mm -hmm. and one black pip. So this takes care of, ter care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also in black, we have Decree of Pain. Mm. Very cool. So this is an interesting one. So six black, black sorcery. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. You draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. Love that. Alternately, cycling for only three black, black. So you cycle, draw a card. When you cycle it, all the creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. You don't draw the cards, but you still get to wipe the board of weenies. So Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is. Uh, this well, you is... get to draw a card. At That's least. true. I believe this shows Typhon. Typhus. Typhus. Yes. Typhus yeah. ending some uh, Cadian Imperial Guard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. I like this whole cycle. The I think the, probably the most powerful one is probably the white one, because um, it's the one that blows up all like enchantments. It's decree of justice. Yeah, I want to say that like you can blow like enchantments and artifacts yeah. and stuff up. But so you both already called this, and good job, blasphemous act. Oh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> love seeing it. Yeah, blasphemous acts. I mean, it's just a great one, and also this particular art is is very <laughs> very cool. Yeah. This one's credited to Games Workshop because it looks like it's from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> uh, not a criticism. Um, so yeah, good to see a blasphemous yeah, act. What is he one. reading? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is one of the books of Lorgar, hmm. uh, because a red armored. Uh, with silver trim, uh, Space Marine would be a word bearer. Mm. Oh, okay. In the roiling depths of the Eye of Terror, the bloodthirsty hordes of Chaos Marines plot the downfall of their loyalist brethren. And uh, yeah, the word bearers love themselves some blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, this next card, I love this because it's like, if you're thinking like, okay, we're going to put together a Warhammer 40,000 Chaos deck, what reprints make the most sense to put in? Chaos Warp. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. obviously yeah yep. it, the name's right there <laughs> is this card like it's one that you really necessarily want to have in your commander deck i like it but then i'm weird like that but i mean you can't have a card called chaos warp and not reprint that in the chaos <laughs> commander deck chaos yeah. warp is so polarizing in the commander community oh i bet <laughs> yeah yeah i know that like there are like there are big people in the community that are like this card is horrible and then there's people like me who have never been slighted by it and say it's one of the best pieces of removal in Commander. Or or a wonderful combo piece in concert with Brainstorm. Yes, that is true. That is a very, very good point. Yeah, you set you can you can set up and turn your you know, your little dinky friend into, I don't know, some eight drop that's hanging out in your deck. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah from your hand. Yeah. yeah. I, I love Chaos Warp. Uh, I love see, seeing what appears to be a Tyranid warrior getting like <laughs> sucked up. Yeah, that, that, is that a map? Oh, it's one of the big siege and or is that just a Carnifex? I can never tell the scale. It might be a Carnifex. There's yeah, a, there's a sister a... of battle and some Necrons. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, there are some Necrons there too. Yeah. yeah. Just cool. a little bit of everything getting yeah, sucked you're just up. Yeah, taking all your play doh and being like. I love the flavor text. Siege cares not what they were or what they become, only that they change. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, he's listed there, and we've been seeing a lot. Kairos Fate Weaver? I feel like we're going to see Kairos. He's a big bird man. Maybe. Could be. We'll Maybe. find out. Could be. I'm just trying to guess what the other, like, sort of, like, commandery creatures will be here. I'm going to need some explanation for what's happening visually in this next one, but we have a reprint of Past in Flames. Ooh. Oh. Wow. Hell yeah. This is a Blackstone Fortress crashing into the fortress world of Cadia. What? <laughs> That's so specific. At what does the, that mean? Uh, at the climax of Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade. Oh. Uh, okay. So, again, <laughs> apple pie from scratch. Right. Eons ago, the Necrons... <laughs> Necrons don't get along with chaos. They don't, they don't like the warp. Right. Um, and the Blackstone fortresses are a relic of their civilization. Ah. Uh, they are... They, 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 there were eight of them, I believe... Oh, I'm going to get this so wrong because it's changed several times. And uh, the last time I really thought about the Blackstone Fortresses was the original edition of Battlefleet Gothic. Um, basically, they're big things in space. They can combine their powers to destroy suns when you get a couple of them together. A big one of them can blow up like, you know, a really big ship quite as efficiently. A couple of them will destroy a planet. Several of them will blow up a star. Wow. Um they were discovered by the Imperial Navy, and, you know, they were like big things in space that were hard to destroy, so they strapped guns to them and used them as, like, planetary defense oh, platforms. No. Of course they did. Um, and during the 13th Black Crusade, I believe, Abaddon found the keys for them <laughs> um, and uh, used them. Uh, did all, all the Imperial Navy personnel on them went missing, uh, and they started moving around blowing things up. And uh, during the fall of Cadia, Cadia is a fortress world that the Imperials guard at the gate of the Eye of Terror, mm. which the forces of chaos used to either have to circumvent or fight their way through. Um, but Cadia was this, uh, the Cadian gate was a region of stable space 
leaping right. from the eye of terror um, because Cadia was covered with these pylons that stabilized the warp around it, which later turned out to be Necron artifacts. Uh. Uh, and so what they just did was they just crashed the Blackstone Fortresses into Cadia. They were like, you know what? We're done playing. Um, wow. Yeah. So that seems like it was it's, a, it's it's efficient an efficient way to do it. Bad for the empire then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was a bad day. Okay. And so with the destruction of Cadia and the loss of the Cadian Gate, uh what uh, resulted was called the Cicatrix Maledictum, mm. which is a giant warp rift that just like ripped the galaxy literally in half. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um uh, and this is that event. So pretty pretty apt for past and flames. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this uh, and so I assume after that you cast things from your graveyard. Yeah, we're gonna. I mean, yeah, we're gonna see some. I assume some pretty powerful instant sorceries. We already have. Yeah. Seen them. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm curious to see because you know that's always the problem with cascade. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you cascade into something that's not really useful at that moment. Mm -hmm. So this kind of gives you that second chance to do it. So. This is such a great card. What Love if it. Past in Flames is amazing. What yeah. if you like your instant sorcery so much you want to have it a second time? We have reverberate. Oh, good. Ooh. This Ooh. this needed to come. Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Yeah, red, red, instant, copy, target, instant, or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. It could be yours. It could be theirs. It could be anybody's. Yeah, this is the more fun counter spell. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, once again, another line here from Kairos, Fate Weaver. That which was will be, that which will be was. And who are these Who are these friends? Uh, those look like uh, Chaos Space Marine Sorcerers, Graham. Neat. Uh, on the left, you look to have a word bearer. Mm. Uh, and on the right, it looks like a, a rubric marine, or n not a rubric marine, but a, a, a Thousand Sun Sorcerer. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they've got sorcerer. right. They've got the the big hat. Yeah, <laughs> love a big hat. So that's that's a dude, and then that's a ghost, and is it the power suit armor? Yeah, I, I believe the sorcerers are still they're still alive. Real. Oh, yeah. okay, but cool. In in the aftermath of what happened to the Thousand Suns, most of the Thousand Suns were reduced to dust, like bound spirits within their power armor. The thousand the wow. Thousand Suns are so cool. Yeah, like, I like their their vibe so much that they're just like yeah, they're dust yeah. ghosts in we, power armor. Yeah, they're like, uh, we did nothing wrong, and everyone else is like, well, actually, you kind of did. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, he, your heart was in the right place, but your brain was absolutely nowhere to be found in any of that, and it was honestly kind Literally. of a big mistake. It was a big. It was a big. You did bad. Uh, we also have Warstorm Surge. Ah. So five and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Yep, love seeing this. Korn's sole desire is to drown the galaxy in a tide of slaughter, to conquer and kill every living thing until there is nothing left but spilled blood and shattered bone. We haven't necessarily commented on it yet, but I'm actually really liking the frames for all of these. Yeah. They have like that kind of like glossy, mm -hmm. yeah, um, a little bit shiny of, vibe. Yeah, uh, or a little bit like um, plane shift or planar planar chaos yes mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 the plane shifted or the the color shifted cards yeah i like that too yeah they all have this this uh planar different chaos. different take on it Ooh, maybe that's chaos. why yeah, maybe <laughs> but uh, one thing i also want to comment on is that a lot of like the warp entities the chaos gods mm -hmm. represent things that are good about humanity mm. uh but kind of inverted it's like a black mirror that only shows you the bad parts of yourself right so like a lot of uh, what goes to compose the god corn is things like are things like competition and ambition and uh you know honor right dignity and in the warp those things become what if i just killed you instead <laughs> what if that would be died? way easier mm -hmm. that would be way easier frankly then i would be very easy for me to win yeah <laughs> yeah all right two more reprints before we move on to the brand new cards Bituminous Blast. Oh, oh yes. sure. Spit Blast. Speaking yeah. of Cascade. Yeah. Three black, red, instant, Cascade, and it deals four damage to target creature. So this has... So, okay, what's... Ooh, sorry. What's so interesting about this to me is that with, with Abaddon, it's mm -hmm. like this Cascades. If you already did five damage, yeah. it Cascades. So it's Again. double Cascade. Yep. And it's also setting up now anything four CMC or less to Cascade afterwards, too. If well, it's only hits creature, and oh, you're right. Yes. ability is you're right. It's on player. Yeah, yep, this yep, is yep. this is good. We're gonna still good though. People are gonna catch, are gonna yeah, are gonna catch themselves on that. So good, good. There, yeah. I made the mistakes. So you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, 
And uh, our last one is, last reprint, sorry, is Deny Reality. Okay. Ooh. Which also has Cascade. So, so Sorcery, three blue, black, return Tucker permanent to its owner's hand. But again, you have Cascade. Uh, that, that looks port. like someone making a Necron go away. Yeah, that would be Araman. Uh, Araman is the, uh, I suppose he could be said to lead the Thousand Suns because Magnus is busy <laughs> being a demon prince on the planet of sorcerers. So Araman is out like, you know, he's looking for the Black Library. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah. All right. Yeah. Poor little Necron warrior. So. Oh, don't worry. He'll be back. Now, some brand new stuff. Typically, in Commander decks, you have your the face commander, but there is usually another option within that shares the same color identity mm -hmm. that you could optionally choose instead. And in the case of this deck, that is Bellacor, ah, the Dark yeah. Master, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which you're, you're both like, oh, okay, this guy. So three blue, black, red for a 6-5 legendary demon noble with flying, and he has two flavor abilities, Prince of Chaos... When Bellacor the Dark Master enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of demons you control. Okay. And Lord of Torment, which says whenever another demon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Um, let's 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 look at this mechanically first, Ben. Okay. Uh, you seem you are, you're you're like hmm, demons, interesting. Yeah. So demons are really in an interesting place where there's a lot of ways that you can build them, but there was never like. There, to me, there's never just like a very like good demon commander that functions off of demons, right? Like you can do like the the newer Rakdos where you have like a pseudo board wipe effect that doesn't affect any of your guys and whatnot. You can do it from a uh, Liliana's contract kind of thing where you just want to try and get a bunch of differently named demons out and then you instantly win the game. Um, and I think there's a couple of new cool dudes that care about demons from um, uh, the 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 D and D uh, sets. Oh yeah, right. Of course, um, of course. Care about like tieflings and stuff like that. But this one is, I don't know. This feels like a really good one, and it is definitely in the three colors that you <laughs> that mm -hmm. you will typically find demons and stuff in. I just did a quick glance over the set and uh, or the deck rather, and including Bellacor, there are sixteen demons. Okay. In the deck already, so you're already. He's starting got a good, from a pretty got good a position. Amount. Yeah. Four so he, by four. Yeah, so he's got a good, you know, an ETB effect that instantly gets you value the moment they come in, because uh, this definitely feels like a card that the moment they enter, it, they are going to get shot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's one of those, you got to kill it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, card seems good. It is great on rate. It's a six, five for six. So right away, that is A-OK -okay by me um, and, you know, turns on Abaddon. Uh, so yeah, seems, seems solid too. And if, if I may, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to see if I'm right about Bellacor and then you can correct me. Is that, is that yeah, all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Bellacor was one of like the, was he like one of the, he was a Primarch and then one of the first demon dudes, but he had love from all four of the gods and they got really jealous. Uh, I, okay. At confession time. I am unfamiliar with Bellacor in 40k. Okay. Um, I know that he was not a Primarch, but my recollection, because I I played a lot of 40k. I started in second edition, and I played up until about 2009, mm -hmm. and then I fell off because we played a lot of Magic. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was in university again, and I was like, I just... I, I got and look at us now. Yeah, yeah. look at us now. <laughs> started at the bottom, now we here. Um... <laughs> But I remember Bellacor from a game called Mordheim. Okay, oh, yeah. Where, yeah, yeah. Which was um, a skirmish level game based in uh, the World of Warhammer fantasy battles. The Sigmar stuff. Yeah, uh, pre-Sigmar. Oh, and okay. And Mordheim, the conceit for Mordheim was that it was a city in the Empire that had been destroyed by a meteor that fell from one of the, the, the moons. And Bellacor was inside that meteor and lived at the heart of this ruined city hmm. now, that you cool. were all kind of like all these different factions were exploring the the edges of um so that's where i know bellacor from and okay. for a long time he had the dopest model <laughs> yeah it had like a bunch of like chains and stuff on like his wings and stuff yeah yeah, yeah because after that he was part of like um Oh, I forget which which campaign it was, but it was you know one of the big like global campaigns the Games Workshop ran mm -hmm. in set in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Yeah, so like my knowledge of 40k is like mainly like 
what I read because I just like reading about armies mm. in, mm-hmm. in like the, the from like their data slates oh, yeah. and all that kind of jazz. I love it. And I believe I might be completely off base and someone can correct me, but I think Bellacor's shtick too is that all the chaos gods love him mm-hmm. and because of that they hate him. <laughs> yeah, I'd be prepared to believe that. He I... like curries favor with all of them. So much so and but then like they started making their own princes, I believe. That or they had their own like prince uh, chaos prince demons that were more so aligned to each of the individual ones but if you play bellicor you're actually not allowed to run any other uh, prince of chaos models oh that's funny in it because he's like jealous of them or something like oh, that i, I like think that a lot. Okay, cool. i think i think that's how it is no, I but, dig that. yeah all right let's move on then to uh just some of the other cards in the set we have heralds of zinch oh <gasps> yay four and a blue for a three three with flying and cascade just a Simple, simple little card. What are these? What uh, are they? Well, Demons of Zinch are, are, are very interesting. And uh, I actually don't know what their current rules are, but there used to be like the basic baseline um, Demon of Zinch was mm. called a pink horror. Okay. And when you killed it, it split into two blue horrors. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's pretty much what they do now. Okay. Yeah. And then they, and then the blue horrors will, sim- will then go into little like pyreling Dudes, okay, yeah. Brimstone Horrors, I think they're called. So sin- uh, since you mentioned it, I'm going to jump ahead to one of the gold cards because we have Pink Horror. Ah, there you go. Oh, there we <laughs> go. If you mix blue and red, I guess. So it's three blue red for a 4-4 Demon Horror with Coruscating Flames. So whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it deals two damage to any target. And I then be grabbing this card instantly. Yeah, and then split. When it dies, create two 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 blue red demon horror creatures named Blue Horror with whenever you cast an instant sorcery, this deals one to uh-huh. the target. So I I make no secret that Thermo Alchemist is one of my favorite magic mm-hmm. cards of all yeah. time. This is how I want to play magic. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. It, and you and I are like the same boat. Like blue red counterburn, like wah. Mm-hmm. And Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. This card oh, rules. This is sweet. <laughs> so this is the this is the token that I was gonna be like, please explain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In how in 40k, what the hell is this thing? Yeah. Those so are, those these are, like are the just main troops of Zinch. Little demons of Zinch. Yep. Okay. Uh, Zinch loves fire. Fire changes things. All right. Well, there you go. There's the there's the token for blue horror. Very, very weird card. All right. Speaking of loving to change things, here's our other blue card in the set. It's Lord of Change. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Six and a blue for a six six demon with flying. It's got ward three and it has architect of deception, which says when it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Seems good. So not not Kairos. No. But like one that's like similar or yeah, this is I mean, a like, Lord this of is, Change. This yeah. This is this Kairos has two heads. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, I'm wondering like, if that is him. Typically a Lord of Change has one. Oh, well, maybe that yeah. is maybe that is, is a maybe specific in, Lord of Change, but yeah, they're just maybe not making is going it incognito. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. This seems like a powerful seven drop. ETBs draw three. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. love it. All right, moving on, moving along, we have a blight grenade, uh, mm-hmm. four and a black sorcery destroy target creature. Also, all creatures get minus three, minus three until Whoa. the turn. So this is another wrath. Yeah, for this deck. Whoa. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's the Carnifex getting blowed up. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Blight grenades, which induce horrendous effects on their victims, have no impact on the Death Guard, who gladly use the devices in extreme close quarters with the enemy. This can really get somebody. Like, you blow up a lord if Ooh. they're, like, slightly too big, and mm, then now all, they're weaker, yeah. and, yeah. All the things that were lording go away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This seems like this seems like something you're just going to want to include in a lot of commander decks. Yes, I think this is a not definitely not an auto include, but it's I mean five mana, super duper efficient. Yeah, I like this card a lot. Yeah, you could potentially also craft states where your stuff gets to live through it. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, and also with it too, like this is this is a spell that like I mean reverberate itself is in the deck. Oh right. So now you get two destroys two and everything, and everything gets, gets minus six, six minus six. Minus six. Mm. Oh boy. Oh boy, that's so, fun. That's that's pretty gnarly. The, the the tough part about this card, and I'm glad that it's not just a wrath, mm. right? Like it, there is some you know flexibility with it that you get to destroy something. Yeah, it's interesting. And maybe some of your it's an interesting design survive, space. Yeah, because this is of course a cascade deck. Right. Right. Yes. So having just and and the fact that they haven't included just like you know, um, not wrath of God, 
Black. Uh, damnation. 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 Yeah. Because damnation could really just shoot you in the foot. But mm-hmm. it's like Blasphemous Act is your. You might you might cascade into it, but probably not because it's way too high costed. And then these ones are like you know Bioblade and and Blight Grenade are more like they're yeah. they have a chance to not completely act, oopsie blow yourself out. Right. So I like that the way that they built this. Yeah. Uh, this next one, this is something I remember from when I was very when I was much younger, just starting to learn about it. And so Ben, this seems like uh, what what you mentioned because you you're a fan of uh, was uh, Nurgle. Nurgle. He's my. So he's this my is boy. this is a great unclean one. <gasps> Yay! Yeah. He got a big mouth in his tummy. You do. <laughs> four and a black for a four or five demon with reverberating summons. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses two life. Then, for each opponent who has less life than you, create a one three black demon creature token named Plague Bearer of Nurgle. Cool. Ooh. And uh, we do have. Got to see my big Cyclops guys? We do have. Yeah, that token. yeah, yeah, yeah. there they are. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> look at the little guy in the background. <laughs> yeah, the nurgling. I yeah. was wondering. Yeah, it was. I, I, before you got to the end, I assumed he was going to make little nurglings or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, there's uh, currently playing um, uh, Total War Three, mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes they like the, ner- the Sometimes they attack by having just little like play, uh, play or nurglings like shoot out of him and like slap something. <laughs> <laughs> But, he's uh, he's, he's holding a little nurgling too. Yeah, I mean, he's a, yeah. he's a baby. Yeah. I've just yeah. always liked the name "Great Unclean One." It's so it really undersells, and it's how that's terrifying. And it's it not is. the Great Unclean One. They no. are one of many Great Unclean yeah, Ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are many greater demons of Nurgle. Yeah, uh, and yeah, uh, Grandfather Nurgle just wants you to be happy. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, this card alone is going to be going in. I was thinking about it as we were talking about it. Uh, a lot of like group slug decks. I think are going to love a lot of the cards that are in this, like mm. people who even just run like Mogus as their commander, mm. and and you know pe- those people like me who run Sulfuric Vortex in your deck, and just the game has to end. I've never heard the term group slug. Group slug. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, the opposite of group hug. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> How does this interact with with Abaddon? At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses two life. I. Th- think there's an opportunity for you yeah, to right. have for you to retain is the priority priority after the after that happens so they lose two life yeah. right and then does the this is a, this would be a great time for a judge but because it says then it yeah that would be a, another trigger, oh right yeah so you could respond to the no 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 this is all one ability is it okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's all one ability but i i believe you get priority again in your end step after this happens and yeah. could cast an instant, an instant just with to take thing, advantage yeah. at least of the, uh, that little bit of extra chunk either way this card's sweet i like it a lot it's a four or five that, that just kind of does things mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like speaking them. of abaddon uh we have a sorcery the mandate of abaddon what's he saying now three and a black choose target creature you control destroy all creatures with power less than that creature's power damn so yeah another Another situational board wipe. Yeah. So yeah. I, I I love that. Kind of, you know, going off of what I was saying earlier. What is that in the background? Uh, those are, uh, oh, I forget what they're called, but they're a demon engine. Right. Yeah. The big thing on top of the pile over there? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a big thing. It's a big thing. I think there's, there's something that we haven't heard or seen yet. And I was wondering. Demon engine? No, uh, demon engines are even just like, um, like hell drakes. Yeah. I mean... We haven't seen any Space Marines yet. Yes, as as creature cards, we've seen them a lot in in uh, card art. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, our next one is not not any kind of Astartes, but it is a Demon Primarch. It's Mortarian. Hey! Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is going to make one of my buddies so happy. <laughs> he's oh, a big Mort. He's the kind of guy that rolls into a, a game where everyone, like big, like 2,000, 3,000 point games, and it's just using the big Nurgle models. <laughs> 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 just tanks and Mortarian hanging out there. So awesome. So five and a black for a five, six flying legendary demon Primarch. With the ability Primarch of the Death Guard, at the beginning of your end step, you may pay X. If you do create X, 2-2 two, two Black Astartes Warrior Creature Tokens with Menace, X can't be greater than the amount of life you have Ooh. lost this turn. This is such a fun build around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Hey, all you, uh, uh, oh, my gosh, uh, Death Shadow players and oh, yeah. whatnot. We've, yeah. This is the deck for you. Here's the uh, Here's the token, by the way. Nice. Very cool Astartes. Very uh, Nurgle looking Astartes in this mm-hmm. one. It's with interesting his, that with they went with Tommy Astartes Mouth. Warrior. Like, yeah. Because like, the other ones have been called what they are. Mm-hmm. So I think, so in 
from from the previews, I think we saw that the the Imperium of Man deck also creates Astartes Series Warrior Series. tokens, but they're blue. They're mm-hmm. not. They're not this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's so maybe that yeah, just assuming, sort of yeah. still falls into that. So there might be some you know buffing effects and whatnot that they can take advantage of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. I love this. Might be the most exciting card for me. I'm so into this. Sweet. Mono, mono black is a an interesting um, deck building uh, mm-hmm. area. Um, a lot of people end up just going like crick <laughs> and right, stuff. Right, you're going right. for like really powerful stuff. Um, but Mortarian is super, super interesting. Yeah, Mortarian was, uh, I, he was kind of the sad boy among the, the, the Primarchs <laughs> for no real reason. And it just made him kind of unpleasant. Mm-hmm. And there were, what, there was 12 Primarchs? 20. 20 well, Primarchs. There were, there were 18 Primarchs, Graham. And there were no, the two others. Didn't exist. Didn't happen. <laughs> I see. I yeah, see. We, uh, it, it's actually kind of like a world building thing like mm. i i think that was mainly there so that you could invent your own ah. um but there have been there's been much speculation about what those two primarchs were and what happened to them interesting cool uh still in blacks so we got more nurgle stuff we got nurgle's conscription four in a black for an instant put target creature from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under your control then exile their graveyard whoa that so while while reanimation effects that you can take from other people's graveyards are always powerful that last bit of text is mega huge yeah yeah you get to take their best thing and then get rid of everything else and you just yeah you just speed at oh my god it is that instant speed speed. yeah you have an instant speed bajuka bog (laughs) you have an instant speed reanimation and bajuka bog i i Wow, this card is actually oh my god, this is so powerful. Yeah, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah. So you could just yeah, take somebody's biggest thing, or if somebody is choosing to bring back their biggest thing, you go, no, actually, yeah, me, thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uno momento, please. I will take that um uh uh that Eldrazi. That's wild. That's about to get shuffled back into your library. Uh-huh. Oh wow, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Instant speed reanimation. Is there? Your it, I'm, I'm wondering. Is there like a? It does, so does it? It does hit the graveyard, or does it go? It, yeah, it, it does. Yeah, they hit the graveyard. It that's it, that's wow. its trigger. And so yeah. you could actually, you not only get their Eldrazi, but you exile their graveyard before it gets shuffled back into their deck. If that's they're relying on that, yeah, that this could mess up this an card's Eldrazi gross. player's whole day. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So oh, we assume my Nurgly. We assume that this figure is, as mentioned in the flavor text, Colvain Hysterius of the Death Guard. Uh, uh, but who's what's the what are the creatures doing the thing uh those are hearing them yeah the uh well those are I, I forget what they're called they ride these big flies but that's in the 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 artist depicting an imperial commissar oh okay oh wow. and colvain hysterius of the death guard implies the death guard who are a legion of Startes. right um, I want to say they're called bloat flies. Yeah, or... that makes sense. They were a bit after my time, and I'm really trying to catch back up. But oh, there's so many new models. There's a lot of new stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, a bunch of corn stuff just dropped. Well, we've had Ooh. Nurgle's conscription. How about Nurgle's rot? Single mana for an en- creature enchantment. Enchant creature and opponent controls. When this creature dies, return Nurgle's rot to its owner's hand, and you make a one-three plague bearer of Nurgle. Neat. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, considering the amount of board wipes and stuff that are going on, mm-hmm. I like uh, I like the, the the marine in the back right, just, <laughs> just like doing oh the like, my Ooh. god, yeah. yeah, they're turning him, and then they're gonna they're turn, turn me. me. Oh, oh my god! Ah, <laughs> uh, all right, I've got a new reaction image. Yeah, yeah, yeah holy moly! <laughs> Perfect. Next we've uh, got yeah one oh, black mana, great. Yeah, yeah. Next we've got a plague drone. Ah, oh, that's go. what. That's yeah, their name. Yeah, ah, there we are. Right, <laughs> three and a black for a three-three demon with flying. It's got rot fly. If an opponent would gain life, that player loses that much life instead. Oh, so the oh. this is um, what the, the not sanguine blood. The other one. The oh, uh, the it's the, got the a vampire that, and she's oh, fighting. Yeah. Exquisite blood. Ex- Right? Isn't yeah, the, is it that? The, yeah, yeah. Anyways, it's that with legs. Yeah, yeah. 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 High ranking plague bearers of Nurgle's realm ride into real space mounted upon rot flies, colossal demonic insects whose appearance is so repugnant it scars the mind. Wow, this card is dope in the Abaddon deck. Like, yep. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you ever just like give the middle finger to all the life linkers yep. and whatnot out there. Oh my goodness. I mean, it comes out on four, so. But yeah, this is. Yeah. This needs to be answered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
uh, hey, let's go out and get some pox. It's pox walkers. So, so I was like, the whole way while we were going through this, I was like, where are all my Nurgle things? And it's like nonstop here. Yeah. Right yeah. Uh, two and a black for a 3-1 zombie with death touch with curse of the walking pox. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, like Cascade, return pox walkers from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Nice. Interesting. So they're yeah. grave three one death, three one death touch, and they just come back into play every time you cast. Every time you cascade, you cast something off cascade or any other way to cast it from not yeah, your hand. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, saw like the cast in flames. flames. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, chaos warp would count. Is it cast or is it just put onto the battlefield? It's, it's just put, put onto, onto the, the battlefield. battlefield. Yeah, right. But yeah. Still, like boxwalkers are cool. They're an integral part of the. The Nergi army. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they all have their improvised weapons, as it's written. Now, <laughs> what what I have always enjoyed about the flavor of 40K mm-hmm. is that it is, you know, in the grim darkness of the future. And uh, everything's very, like, edgy and grim and dark and all that stuff. And yet you still have room for creatures like this. May I introduce to you the sloppity bile piper? <laughs> Wait, the the what did he what what the, uh, is this a thing, Cameron? The sloppity bile piper. I'm unfamiliar with it, <laughs> I, but I I this is this is kind of one of the modes that Nurgle operates in. Nurgle yeah. wants you to be happy. Yeah, he's got like a version of his own head on a jester stick. Yeah, he's he, sitting on a bunch of maggots. Yeah, three three for three and a black with an ability jolly gut pipes. <laughs> two and a two and tap and sack creature. The next creature spell you cast this turn has cascade. Well, that's very good. What I just I the sloppy. I want to know what a sloppy bile piper is. I assume this is one of the special characters that uh, was released when Chaos Demons split off and became their own book. Sure, from Chaos Space Marines. Yeah, oh, I mean this, yeah. this dude is sweet. The yeah. the the pipe is a big heart. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's like bones in the pipe for yeah. Man, yeah, everything about like, this is neat. You guys like being happy, right? <laughs> yeah, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly gut pipes. All right. Uh, next, we have the Tally Man of Nurgle, hmm. who's just, I guess, like an accountant. Mm-hmm. Uh, two and a black for a 2 3 Astartes warrior with lifelink. So, this is just a human. I mean, you know. Well, yeah. transhuman. Transhuman, yeah. 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 Uh, the Sevenfold Chant. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you draw a card and you lose one life. If seven or more creatures died this turn, instead you draw seven cards and lose seven life. Neat. <laughs> that is wild. Look at that little dirk like just carrying carrying his scrolls. <laughs> yeah, he's, the got, scrolls around. he's got a job. There's an abacus. Yeah. I think I mean the, I think the Astartes is operating that abacus with their own tentacles. L- seems to be. Maybe. Yeah. 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 yeah, coming out the side there. I love that literally this is someone who's just in charge of keep keeping track of the numbers of the... Yeah, dead. how many people died. Yeah. yeah. Why does Nurgle care? That's fascinating to me. I, I mean, a lot of 40K's aesthetic is based on pop medieval medievalism, right? right? Yeah. So, you know, there's just going to be weirdos doing things yeah. in the background for no real reason. Okay, cool. It's a good little 2-3. Yeah. Great. I like this at 3 mana quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And our last uh, mono black card is Venom Crawler. Mm. Oh, there we go. Three and a black for a two-two artifact creature demon with lifelink and devourer of souls. Whenever another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Venom Crawler. This is okay. going to gain somebody a lot of life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, this deck has so many board wipes mm. and so many things that love when creatures die. Yeah. Is is that just called a Venom Crawler? What uh, what what is that? What everyone stop? What is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at this weird dog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, I'm gonna go ahead and call that a demon engine. It's it's yeah. an artifact creature. It's a demon. It's, just, it's uh it's got mechanical stuff and flamethrowers on it. Yeah, skewering those tyranids. Yeah, ask, you know, ask the Iron Warriors. They'll they'll forward your question to the relevant authorities and figure out who made this for you, or perhaps the Dark Mechanicum. Neat. Yeah. All right. Let's move along into red now. Uh, so probably less Nurgle stuff in red. I, would, I assume I we're going to see a lot of corn. Corn and, Slanesh. Yeah. Both, in fact. Mm. <laughs> little little preview. Uh, Aspiring Champion is our first uh, red card. Three and, and uh, or brand new red card. Three and a red for a 3-3 three, three, Astartes Warrior with Menace with Ruinous Ascension. When Aspiring Champion deals combat damage to a player, sacrifice it. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield. Shuffle the rest into your library. If that creature is a demon, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. 
So it's a little it's it's its own chaos warp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, aspiring champions used to lead squads of of chaos space marines, and back when uh, demons were part of the chaos marine book, um, you used to be able to summon demons during the game. Right. Uh, and that had various mechanics. My favorite was that they could appear randomly or you could replace an aspiring champion with one. Yeah. Yeah, it still kind of works that way. Yeah. Okay, good. From my good. understanding. Yeah, I I I thought that was really good. So this so this sounds like this is actually a pretty pretty clean card design then also from that from that perspective. Yes. Yeah, this feels very right. Sweet. I love that um we had Warstorm Surge, which is the whenever a creature TBs it deals its damage. We had Bellacore who does that with demons. And so this is just like a thing that the demons do. Like I said, there's 16 demons in this deck. So, mm-hmm. you know, you got a reasonable shot to hit a demon with this friend. So yeah. mm-hmm. pretty cool. One thing I've noticed for most of the cards that you've also shown off to us, uh, a lot of evasion. Mm. Yeah. Lots like, of flying. Lots of flying. Lots, lots of menace. The tokens that are created mm-hmm. have menace too. Like, yeah, blocking one... is going to be a nightmare <laughs> against this deck so far. <laughs> what's what's Red's favorite kind of evasion? It's trample. Uh, Blood Crusher of Corn. Yeah. Hey. Nice. So three and a red for a three three demon knight with trample and devastating charge. Other creatures you control have trample. Trample Lord, let's go. The yeah. brazen. This is thunder. old art. It looks. Like it too. is. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's or, a Games Workshop one. Or it yeah. evokes old art. Yeah. I feel that this is new art that is in the style of older mm. art. You can see this in a white dwarf issue yeah the brazen yeah. thunder foremost of the blood crusher legions are named for the sound they make as they ride into battle what is this blood crusher riding another uh, demon this engine? would be a juggernaut of of corn Ooh, which are you know magma puppies <laughs> kind of they're made of brass cool bronze mm-hmm. one of those bronze probably, <laughs> probably bronze is a lot yeah. more yeah bronze is a lot more tough they're not riding on a tuba um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey what's a bloodthirster oh uh, big big it's a big, big boy demon. yeah big great boy. Here you go. Woo. Greater demon of corn. Five and a red for a 6-6 six, six demon with flying and trample. When it deals combat damage to a player, untap it, and you get an additional combat phase. Uh, and it can't attack a player. It's already attacked this turn. So you, if in magical Christmas land... There's no upper limit on that. That's... Well, sorry. The upper limit is the number of opponents you have. Yeah. 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 In magical Christmas land, you get I to attack, attack you, and then I untap, and then I get to attack Cameron, and then I yep. get to attack somebody else. I had a feeling there was definitely going to be some sort of extra combat stuff in once we got to corn and yeah, this you card a, is you did wild. an extra combat deck for um, a Kamigawa. S- Kamigawa, yeah, yeah. Get that bloodthirster in. Yeah, there. this guy's going in yeah. for sure. Holy moly! Yeah, I'm not sure that Astartes is making it home to his kids. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a big sword though. Yeah, that is I a mean, very probably big sword. It's, he's probably going to be fine. <laughs> Maybe the bloodthirster rolls badly. Yeah, call the Grey Knights. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we have a Chaos Terminator Lord, hmm. looking very cool. Uh, three in a black, sorry, three in a red for a 3-3 three, three Astartes Warrior with Lord of Chaos. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn. Neat. Yeah. Very yeah. clean. Very clean. I like they were like, no, no, not just a big axe, an, an electrified axe, and yeah. not just a gun, but a gun with a with a sword in the front of it. Bolters will forever be like just the goofiest weapons. They're great. Uh, I believe that this is a combi bolter. <laughs> is it? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just, I mean, yeah. like with well, how... It's, okay, it's a machine gun. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. But what if it was a machine gun that fired rocket launchers? Yeah. <laughs> right? And you're just like, yeah, all right. But they're so compact. Yeah. They're so compact. Is that also a hook? on it it's yeah. got like the oh, sword yeah absolutely it's why a, not Grant? it's a tooth sword and a hook <laughs> yeah, yeah in case okay. they get under sure pull them up why not all right great uh dark apostle is next mm. three and a red for a three three astartes warlock with gift of chaos three and tap the next non-creature spell you cast this turn oh has cascade these decks are, these so decks are going to be pilfered for this card so between the dark yeah. apostle and the sloppity bile piper we've got creatures and non-creature spells covered yeah, this would be a uh, member of the Black Legion. Yeah. This is also the fourth creature we've seen in red that is three and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Aspiring Champion and Blood Crusher of Corn and the Chaos Terminator Lord and yeah. the Dark Apostle. This seems like a crowd. The four slot seems kind of crowded. Yeah. There's one There's one more 3-3 three, three for mm. three and a red, actually. Uh, but it's not next because next we have the Herald of Slanish. Hey. Which is, what is that? That's a weird-looking demon. It's a demonette. With, 
like crab claw carcinization carcinization comes for us all. Mm-hmm. Uh, two and a red for a two two demon with locus of slanesh. Demon spells you cast cost two less, and other demons you control have haste. Yeah. Well, well, this is a new staple. <laughs> yeah, <for your demons. laughs> yeah. This card is great. Yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah, very quick and easy. Two less to cast. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bellicor is three, and the Grixis. Yes. Yeah. So bringing Bellicor down to four. Mm-hmm. And can instantly well, I mean, even just having this, and then you play the because what how how what was the um, the extra combat the the bloodthirster uh, five and a red five so, and a red so for for only four and a red okay with haste yeah with haste <laughs> just bring this guy right out really quick pretty good I mean I feel that Soul Ring Herald of Slanesh <laughs> God yeah <laughs> yeah pretty good I yeah. mean well you couldn't quite do that you do it on it, turn two yeah but turn yeah. two yeah. that feels like a potent turn two. Neat. That, I mean, that's Lanesh's whole combat thing. Is they're hella quick. What if your demon already has haste? It's Keeper of Secrets. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Five and a red for a six four first strike and haste with Symphony of Pain. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, Keeper of Secrets deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. Pretty cool. What's a Keeper of Secrets? A greater demon of Slanesh. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so this thing loves to cascade. Yeah. Yep. Six four first strike is nice, and then also just has haste too. Like, yeah, this is gonna be hard to get through. <laughs> this this could also just sit there. Uh, like, I don't. E- I might not even attack with this thing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not not much is getting through that. And then you have this like totem pole of value. Now you correctly called Mortarian, or at least you mentioned Mortarian. Mm-hmm. There was someone else that you called that I don't think we have, but we do have another legendary here. Ooh. So uh, talk to me about Karn the Betrayer. Ah, uh, mm. Karn the Betrayer. Okay. Karn the Betrayer was the first captain of the World Eaters during the Horus Heresy, oh. and he continues to persist to this day. Um, I'm actually currently reading uh, um, one of the Horus Heresy novels called uh, 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 Betrayer. Right. <laughs> so this guy. Yeah. Um, which is about, you know, the World Eaters. The World Eaters uh, fell to Korn fair, in a fairly straightforward way, from what I understand, because... They came from a world where they were uh, gladiators and they fought in these pits for the entertainment of people who lived much higher lives above them. Mm. And uh, their Primarch, Angron, who was, you know, because he was a Primarch, lord of, you know, the gladiator pits, (laughs) uh, had a large part of his brain that was responsible for, you know, he had a cybernetic enhancement called the Butcher's Nails, which made him feel nice when he killed people. Ah, and that was very difficult to get rid of. The <laughs> yeah. emperor couldn't get rid of that. How, uh, I can't see how this could possibly go wrong. Yeah, no, no, this is fine. This <laughs> Oops, is awesome. Oops. And so Angron, when he was given the world, uh, the world eaters legion, uh, it had these installed in all of his sons. Oh no. Yeah. Is Karn one of them? Yeah, Karn's one of them. Okay. The world eaters got such a bad deal. So this card which is, is weird. honestly like. Like, it's honestly kind, like, one of the things that really, like, cements some of the villainy in the Horus Heresy yeah. is that Lorgar, who is the Primarch of the Word Bearers, who is kind of responsible for this entire thing, is already a dirtbag. But mm-hmm. I hate the way he treats Angron because he, I think he thinks he's Angron's friend. Mm. <laughs> and he's like, it's all right, buddy. I'm just going to send you over there, okay? And I'm going to wait back here and you get to kill all these people. And Angron's like, good. Yeah, I love killing. <laughs> love yeah. to kill. So, this yeah, this is a weird card. This is a so, very weird magic card. Three and a red for a legendary Astartes Berserker. He's a 5-1. He has three abilities. Berserker. Karn the Betrayer attacks or blocks each combat of Fable. Sigil of Corruption. When you lose control of Karn the Betrayer, draw two cards. Now, flavorfully, that's a great sentence. But mechanically and magic, wait, what? what's happening? Why would I lose control of this card? The Betrayer. If damage would be dealt to Karn the Betrayer, prevent that damage, and an opponent of your choice gains control of it. So he can't be killed in combat, even though he's a 5-1, but it means that then you draw two cards and someone else gets Karn. It's, yeah. not, even, it's not even in combat. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's any damage. So destroy effects still work and debuff still work, but you can't deal, you can't use burn or combat damage to get rid of Karn. But then... 
you draw two cards, but someone else gets Karn. But then they'll get to draw two cards, probably. Yeah. Karn's just out there. Um, <laughs> Helping everybody. Yeah. Living yeah. life. Yeah, yeah he's just lane. out there living, his, living yeah. his best life out there on the battlefield. It's interesting that uh, it's not the thing, it's not who did the damage to it either. No, it could be You get to you choose, choose who to give it to. Yeah. yeah. Who wants Karn? Yeah. Corn cares not from when the strange. blood flows. Fa, la, la, la. <laughs> right, like it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. Just this get out there and kill something, and then you just like and then Karn goes out onto the battlefield and he stays there for a while. Amazing. All right, we have a artifact creature here. We have Knight Rampager. Hey, four and a red for a six-five trample artifact creature knight with frenzied rampage. The beginning of combat on your turn. Choose an opponent at random. Knight rampager attacks them if able, and when knight rampager dies, it deals four damage to target opponent chosen at random. What, what's up with this guy? So, so interesting. Knights were who I wanted to play when I was first getting into forty k because I just wanted one model right to, to fight mm. people's legions right and stuff. I, I'm gonna let Cam go off on this for in a sec. Just, but I just wanted to point out that I love that they just kept it at creature type knight. Yeah, yeah. That you've got you're yeah. gonna you're, in the knight decks. You're gonna have you know the Mardu knight decks with like Sir Gwyndolid yep. or whatever. Yeah. That you're gonna have all these like, people on who's horses. This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> clang, we, clang, we have clang, a dragon. Clang. We have this knight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also a knight. Yeah. Uh, the knight houses were. Um, uh, uh, a militant branch of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, you know, there are Titans. Right. Which are enormous, multi-story, tall war engines. Uh, that, like, that people are, live in. Well, not yeah. live in, but, like, walk around inside. Yeah. And uh, knights are much more kind of like, um, uh, you know, they're still multi-story tall, but, you know, a house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there people, the people pilot There's a things? single pilot. There's, a, so there's one person inside yes. this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of power. To uh, and the, they were, they're 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 very old, mm -hmm. like Epic Forty K, uh, which was an old game from the nineties. The the little teeny weeny ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. it was actually a very good game. But knights appeared in that, and they were um, brought back because people want big models. They want big centerpiece models that look right. cool. And this was something that was already in the lore, and you know they're awesome. Cool. They're huge. Hey, how do you want to? How you want to? settle up or sidle up for some real big cascade yes i'm for it some men just high, want high high on it some men just want to let the galaxy burn <laughs> x five red for a sorcery with cascade and it deals x plus two damage to each creature that didn't enter the battlefield this turn what a weird so card. it protects whatever creature you hit off the cascade yeah yeah and you could, yeah, this is this is ostensibly too, because when it's Cascade checks when it's on the stack, right? And that whatever it's CMC is whatever you yeah. decide to put into it. Yeah. But minimum six. Yeah. And it'll deal two damage at that point. But if you're later in the game, you can just make it be another wrath. Yeah, this is a weird one. What's happening here visually, Cam? Is this another example of that fortress world, or is this? Uh, this might be. Yeah, this this might be what's happening to Cadia. This... Uh, you can see the smashed remains of an imperial battle fleet, mm. um, including what looks like a space marine battle barge. And that's a yeah. chaos sigil. Yeah, on yeah, the... yeah, that is the eight pointed star of chaos, Graham. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> love it. Love that for this. Planet. I mean, this could be any number of worlds. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, but how? Yeah, this. <laughs> you're this is an a, expensive card. Yeah, you're having a, you're yeah. having a tough time evaluating this one. Yeah, like I mean, so again, it's it it follows the 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 thing where it's like I wouldn't be sad to to cascade into this because mm -hmm. it'll at least still do do two damage. Um, yeah, I mean, it's I'm 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 excited to see more cascade cards. I I run one of my main decks is a cascade deck, mm. which is a teamer one. Um, so I will definitely be running this. Very good. Um, but it's yeah, this is really expensive. Yeah, very very yeah. expensive. But uh, one of the big things that is taking over a lot of commander is treasure. And like, oh yeah, right. It's very very powerful. Good um, good very ramping. Easy yeah. to get a lot of treasure. Good um, point. So yeah, I think this definitely has a role because at base it's a pyroclasm and you run so many three threes yes. in this deck. Yep, that's a good point. Um, uh, yeah, so you put you, you I mean you just play this for six pyroclasm and get something six or lower. Yeah, so right. it's yeah, cascade is so powerful that you could you could just put a card that says cascade 
on mm-hmm. it, which is which is throws of chaos. Yeah, I was gonna which say, is, was Cascade actually retrace. run in constructed decks. Yeah, <laughs> so. I love that card. It's just, it just doesn't do yeah. anything. Yeah, it has no just very powerful. inherent abilities. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our last mono red card from the from the set is a uh, Seeker of Slanesh, three and a red for a three three with haste. And the allure of Slanesh says each opponent must attack with at least one creature each combat if able. God, are those what are they called? The uh, uh, oh the, dogs, yeah, uh, the bad dogs. Uh, the heart seekers. I think so. Those are weird looking. Yeah, yeah. they're creepy. They got big old tongues. <laughs> yeah, I see that. I don't like it. Yeah, that's messed up. Oh, I do. I do have actually. Sorry, I have one more red creature here. Um, <laughs> please explain the noise marine. Yeah! yeah! Oh my oh, god! Yeah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh! This makes me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> you ever shred so hard you make somebody blow up? I was not expecting that. So what the hell's a noise marine? They are um, exactly what's on the tin. Yeah. This is the 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 doof warrior from from uh, Fury Road. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, obviously, they're sharing some obviously genetics. Dates, uh, they're Slanesh-y aligned uh, uh, space marines. space marines. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the noise marines are a cult within the Emperor's Children Legion. Astartes, uh, who are all dedicated to Slanesh, and they use sonic weapons. Although uh, sonic is debatable whether they're actually psionic weapons is probably more appropriate. Right. But they've got the Doom Siren, which is... Like a singer? Yeah, a singer. Uh, And then I forget the name of the other two weapons. One is like, you know, Dave Mustaine finger style. uh, And the the other one is a bass. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So this guy's literally like shredding those necrons to pieces yeah. yes oh a sonic blaster is the that's amazing yeah so yeah it's a four and a red for a three two with cascade by the way Sick. so more cascade for you there and with sonic blaster when noise marine enters the battlefield it deals damage equal to the number of spells you've cast this turn to any target mm-hmm. so it would cast it would it would count the cascade spell and itself so at minimum it's coming in dealing two damage oh sweet yeah. okay yeah 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 Oh, I love this. <laughs> yeah, I also love how they've got a bolt gun integrated into the Sonic Blaster. Yeah, in case it wasn't just in enough. case. Yeah. yeah, just in case. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's like like I've been playing Custodius in Kill Team, and it's like I have giant you know swords and and uh, like halberds, halberds and pikes and yeah. stuff that also have a gun embedded in them. That's the handle that you hold yeah. on to, and you know, just just in so, case. Sometimes you feel a little like a little bolt gunny, and you want you want it to be there in case you ever have that craving. Yeah. Just in case. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So this is a guitar that fires a gun that fires rocket launchers. I love 40K so much. <laughs> it's pretty great. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, on to the gold cards. And the first one is one that we actually saw spoiled a while back. It is Blood for the Blood God. Eight. Black, I... black, red <laughs> for an instant. What's up? I'm only just now, even though this card's been around forever, noticing that it's in the the corpses of, of space Ultramarines. Marines. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never noticed that. Uh, it's an instant. It's only a 11 mana instant. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature that died this turn. So they got that going so for you. so many board wipes. Yeah. Discard your hand, then draw eight cards. Blood for the Blood God deals eight damage to each opponent. Exile. Blood for the Blood God. It's got an exclamation mark there, so I feel like I got to shout yeah, it I mean, every yeah. time. It, it, is this one of the few magic cards with punctuation? Yes. Yeah. There's one more coming up, which awesome. I, I'm a big fan Hot of. Hans run. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, eight is Korn's number. Oh, okay. So in certain older editions, if you ran a squad of eight Korn Berserkers, you got a free upgrade to an aspiring champion. Oh. Um, and I assume that's Korn's sigil that those bodies are laid yes. out in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great awful love it <laughs> so they didn't uh, they didn't spoil like is there I'm, I'm very curious if we're gonna see skulls for the skull, skull throne? throne well that's I mean, the flavor, well, that text, is the flavor on text this one oh it's i, I so guess probably that's it yeah, yeah that's fair yeah uh but we do have a chaos defiler three mm-hmm. ah, there's red, the demon edges. black ah yes for a 5-4 demon construct artifact creature with trample and battle cannon when mm-hmm. chaos defiler enters the battlefield or dies for each opponent choose a non-land permanent that player controls destroy one of them at random cool huh neat yeah 
I love random stuff. In, Me too. In Commander. Yes. Yeah. It takes the pressure off me. Yeah, you're yeah, no, exactly. long, you're no longer the fault. bad guy. Sorry, yeah, 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 it's just exactly. random. It's, it's the card. It's the equivalent of, it. yeah, rolling. But you put yeah, the card so, in your deck. Oh, I can't control it. Yeah, yeah no, sorry. I just yeah, I just <laughs> opened this pre-con. This kind of reminds like, me of, uh, what is it, Phyrexian Battle Engine or whatever. It was the six mana, like, crab artifact looking thing oh yeah kind of reminds me of that a little bit so flavorfully are these do the do the hordes of chaos the ruinous powers make these or are these always taken over of adeptus mechanica stuff uh they they, oh good question actually (laughs) uh i they are both more and less integrated with each other than their their imperial counterparts i think the dark mechanicum uh, roll pretty tightly with the legions that they're along with. Okay, so the, um, but the the but the the ruinous powers make these yes, themselves. These yes. are not just like overtaken not just imperial stuff. No, okay, no. cool. Uh, these are quite distinct from anything that the Imperium makes because it's messed up. As you can see, it is a demon construct. Mm. Um, so that th- this is alive. Yeah. Wow, that sucks. All right, and cool. There's, there's there's some fleshy bits on there. So here's an interesting one. Well, alive. Chaos mutation. So three blue red for an instant. Exile any number of target creatures controlled by different players. For each creature exiled this way, its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card, put that card onto the battlefield, then the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. So it's, you can exile all of the creatures and everybody gets one creature am i reading this correct no for each creature no, exile no, no yep. it's each creature okay so yeah it's it's this it's a mass chaos warp but it doesn't have to hit you yeah it, but it mm-hmm. could hit you so this is this i mean this is is a g wave basically with yeah creatures yeah um so i definitely think that this can see play like it's also instant yeah yeah so i mean you turn yeah. something big into a bunch of little wieners um you can also use this to uh I mean, you can use it to save yourself as well because it is at instant and those things won't be attacking anymore. So if you're getting attacked by a bunch of things, you can go, no, actually, and turn those oh, wow, yeah. into things mm-hmm. and take them out of combat. So. Non- turn all your 1-3 Plague Bearer tokens into actual creatures. Or if deck. someone's gone infinite with some kind of like uh, kiki-jiki sure. effect. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We can just get them there. Yeah, you made, what, 400 trillion of those? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now... Yeah, that this is where. Oh my God, this is one of those beautiful moments where you're like, where the your your opponent is like, okay, I've demonstrated this infinite loop, and you're like, go on, yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. like, and yeah. At, yeah. please and proceed, yeah. Governor. Yes, yeah. I need sorry, you, you're gonna have to play this out. I need yeah. you to name a number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Next, we I like have it. a we have a legendary artifact, Ooh. and you're gonna have to help me on the pronunciation because I want to call it the. Drachnian? Drachnian, yes. This is uh, Abaddon's Demon Sword. Ooh, fun! So, four black red for a legendary artifact equipment. Echo of the First Murder. When Drachnian enters the battlefield, exile up to one target creature. You just get to kill something. Just It, go, it gets exiled. That's Drachnian. just a thing that happens. Uh, Demon Sword. Equipped creature has menace and plus X plus O where X is the exiled card's power. Ah. Mm-hmm. And equipped for two. This is yeah. Phyrexian Invoker or not and Jester. Yeah. As a as as a sword. Yeah. <laughs> you're cool. now in this. Yeah. You're... I'm gonna put you in here <laughs> and then you're gonna work for me. Yeah. Man, equipped two as well. That's that's, that's cheap. Hella cheap. That is super cheap. <laughs> so is this just this is just Abaddon's that's that's the lore there. This is Abaddon's sword. Yeah, cool. I I would need to look it up specifically what it is, but I mean that's him right there. Yeah, that's him a, right there. Open a little, the door. Little face on the sword too. Ah, my guiding yeah, moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have the the exalted flamer of Tsinch is a two blue red for a two four demon with sorceress inspiration. At the beginning of your upkeep, return an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard to your hand. Love it. And Fire of Zinch, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Exalted Flamer of Zinch deals one damage to each opponent. It's making Charm me bre- cry. Yeah, it's Charmbreaker Devils. It is, yeah. But it's but cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> each opponent. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Uh, Cameron, they're printing the cards yeah. we need. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm. <laughs> That's a weird looking demon. Seeing this with a Torbran yeah. out. And oh my goodness. Zapping everybody. Oh, four mana for two, four. Got a nice butt. So it gets around like half of the 
Um, yeah, the wrath effects. The wrath effects in here. Because that yeah, was minus three, minus three. That doesn't... was the one that was really getting yeah. me because we commented on how many three threes there are in this yeah, deck. Yeah, and right. there, there's a board wipe that literally gives minus three, minus three. So I was a little bit worried, but this thing yeah. this thing laughs at it. Now, even I knew this was something that we'd, that we'd be uh, hoping to see. It's a, it's a only one L. It's a hell brute. Ah, yep. Three <laughs> black, red for a 5 4 artifact creature, Astartes Dreadnought, with haste and sarcophagus. You may cast Hellbrute from your graveyard by exiling another creature card from your graveyard in addition to paying its other costs. With the flavor text, no, no, not the sarcophagus. Corn, damn you, you disloyal curs. Just kill me. From Kalos the Ravager, presumably because the Hellbrute is, they take someone that's almost dead. Yep. And put them in the robot. This is a life support system. Oh, this good. is healthcare. <laughs> mm, they're the heroes. Yeah. Medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Even in debt, I still serve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this is, yeah. Sounds uh, like this person's not thrilled to be put in it. Yeah, no. Uh, the loyalist, loyalist Astartes have a, a vehicle called a Dreadnought, hmm. which is, you know, a sarcophagus, a life support sarcophagus in this giant suit. Uh, that they use to entomb storied heroes who are not quite dead and may yet continue to serve the emperor in that. Uh, <laughs> Great for that. It's unpleasant because, yeah. you know, you're in a constant state of sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they, they, you get to go into hibernation for long periods of time. And then when you wake up, you get to kill people. And that's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. It's pretty and, cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I think Hellbrutes don't really have the hibernation period. <laughs> five mana, five, four. With haste is pretty sweet. Hmm. The fact that you can kind of just continuously replay this. Yep. Um, it's it's interesting though. It's like it's probably a little bit too high costed because you know obviously a lot of these cards can be played in eternal formats. Um, yeah, five mana is a, a big ask, but maybe when you're heck bent, this it just this, keeps this coming be back. Nice. Yeah, it yeah. just keeps coming back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna jump around with our last sort of bunch of cards here. Um, the lost and the damned. Hmm. One blue, red for an enchantment. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control from anywhere other than your hand, or you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, create a 3-3 three, three red spawn creature token. Spawn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Spawn. Oh. What is Whoa. what is that? Chaos spawn are kind of like, uh, y y are you familiar with the film The Thing? <laughs> yeah. So is Rick Priestley in 1990. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> and Jervis Johnson. Uh, it's it's a chaos spawn. It's a weird amalgam of things. Flesh and, and yeah. Okay. Zinch, Zinch especially makes them. Uh, but you know they're they're just kind of an uh, effect of what happens when you interact with the warp. Great. So uh, okay, you have you you were showing up. You have the book, The Lost and the Damned. Yeah. This is this is a recurring term. All right. With chaos, there are the slaves to darkness and the lost and the damned. Okay. So what's interesting is the line whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, because you can't cascade into land. No. no. So this is just sort of like future proofing, I guess, for other because I haven't actually seen any well, way. So right away, here. the actually thinking about it, like the deck that I run, which is the Teamer deck, uh, right. runs the Teamer uh, legendary from the first Commander Legends, which whenever you cascade, you can grab a land from amongst the cards that you're going through and put it onto the battlefield. Oh. Um, so, so this gets into that deck. It does, yes. It sure Neat. goes into that deck. Um, so three mana uh, is it cards are a nice little romantic spot for me. Mm. One of my favorite cards is called Fevered Visions. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And so this kind of gives me little bit vibes from that. Um, it's not not obviously at all the same. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this this you're going to be cascading. So, yeah, this seems good. All right. Yeah. We have a Mutilith Vortex Beast. Uh, four blue red for a 6-6 six, six Mutant Beast with Trample and Warp Vortex. When Mutilith Vortex Beast enters the battlefield, flip a coin. New, new flip a coin card. Flip, All right. Flip a coin for each opponent you have. For each flip you win, draw a card. For each you lose, Mutilith Vortex Beast deals three damage to that player. So you're not really losing. You don't really lose, no. no. <laughs> Neat. All right. New flip. I'm always happy for coin flip cards. Yeah. yeah. How big is the, Are those scale humanoids lower on the I believe those card? are scale necrons. Yeah, down okay. on the right hand there. So this is a big thing. Well, that's yeah, a, it's a big it's a big thing. That might even be an immortal, so it might even yeah. be bigger. How big would this this figure be? Like this tall? Like uh well, so no. a a necron warrior is about like this. Yeah. 
So this would probably be like, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Gigas. That'd be a big. That'd be a big it's, end. It's a big boy. It's a big. <laughs> do they make that? Uh, not that I've, I've never seen, seen it before. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. But it's Dope. cool. Uh, oh, hey. I love it when they say the name of the deck in the <laughs> in the deck. It's the Ruinous Powers. Oh, that's them. Yeah. Hey, hey me and the boys. Yeah, me and the boys. <laughs> <laughs> they even photoshopped Rhino into yeah, the corner. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's. No good. Uh, he kind of looks like he's in the background there too. So it's uh, two black red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose an opponent at random. Exile the top card of that player's library. Until the end of turn, you may play that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. When you cast a spell this way, its owner loses life equal to its mana value. Neat. Neat. So Plays well with Abaddon. Yeah. So these are, from left to right, Nurgle. Corn? Uh, yeah, Corn. Yep. Cool. Uh, Slanesh. Slanesh, and then Zinch? Yeah. Zinch, yeah. Cool. Do they it. usually hang out like this? No. I didn't well, think so. I mean, this would be a very, like, difficult to arrange photo op. <laughs> is is that is that them, or is that, like, they're... Because, like, I feel yeah, like... Okay. Because Nurgle does looks like a big, great, unclean one. Yeah. He does, yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I mean, was wondering, because that just looks like Kairos. The one there looks like the... Yeah, um, these might be the named greater demons. Yeah, oh, and like okay. that one looks like a, a, a bloodthirster. Yeah. So that might just be kind of like their heralds, but I mean, it could also just be them because you're right. Nurgle yeah. does look like a yeah. big great unclean one. Still, it'd be yeah. a very bad day if you see this. <laughs> yeah. If all four of them, I'm surprised yeah. they're not punching each other out. Too. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, next, we have a Sangor Shaman. Nice. Hmm. So those are the discs. That you were talking yes. about. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I'm thinking of something completely different, and there's probably thousands, possibly millions of YouTube comments already. <laughs> well, they've definitely listened to this point. To, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the edit. Uh, two blue red for a three three mutant shaman with flying and sorceress elixir. Whenever Sangur shaman deals combat damage to a player, copy the next instant or sorcery spell you cast this turn. When you cast it, you may choose new targets for the copy. Mm, classic. Seeing mm. mutant. As a uh, creature type, is fun. Yeah. yeah. So here, here's another card with, with um, punctuation. I love it. It's great. Kill, maim, burn. Mm. Sweet. Three black red for an instant. Choose one or more. Destroy target artifact. Destroy target creature. Deal three damage to target player. Nice. What do? You, yep. What more do you need? Probably you pick all three. This. Yeah. Is, I mean, so this reminds me of. Um, it was the gruel spell where you have to pick every mode of oh, you have to pick all the right. parts of it or you, else you can't cast it. Oh, I don't like, remember that one. It's like ruinous something or other. Hmm. But it's like it's like you have to destroy a creature, a land, an enchantment, and an artifact or else you can't oh, cast it. Oh, uh, right, right. From, um, this was from War of the Spark? No, no. No, that, no, that from like, that was Ravnica. Right, right, right. Yes, that and was. Maybe re Return, I want to say. War of the Spark, you could, you could choose yeah. not all of them. But uh, yeah, this one. I know I the see, one you're thinking of. Yeah, I see very few instances uh, where you're not using all three. Yeah, and that yeah. is very. Everybody's nice. got a soul ring. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this would be a chain axe ruining someone's life. <laughs> yeah. You can see oh, the right. Those are the blades. Yeah, oh, the yeah, motion. You can see it on, going. On oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Cha Hello, axe. No. 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 Yeah. Chain axe. Vroom, vroom. Put a chainsaw in the axe. Chainsaw goes in the axe. Axe goes on the head. Chainsaw. Do I have to think of every yeah. chain axe? Yeah. 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 Kill, axe. maim, burn. Perfect. Uh, which is the battle cry of the corn berserkers. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So I love this. This is, I think, great use of the card type because there is a saga in this deck. And of Ooh, course, of course, nice. what saga? What, Horus Heresy. What, what story would you tell from the past? And ex exactly. It is the Horus Heresy. Nice. Three blue, black, red for a saga. Not with read ahead. This is a normal saga. Mm -hmm. uh, for Chapter one, for each opponent, gain control of up to one target non-legendary creature that player controls for as long as the Horus Heresy remains on the battlefield. Okay, so maximum three turns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter two, draw a card for each creature you control but don't own. Draw three. Nice. And chapter three, starting with you, each player chooses a creature. Destroy each creature chosen this way. Interesting. Okay. So interesting. So mm -hmm. this this will break up a board stall pretty Pretty effectively. Yeah, so you grab a bunch of things, then you draw three if they survive to this point, and yeah. then everybody gets to choose a creature. So they could choose... But they get their creatures back. Right, they're going to get their creatures back after mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. I think If they don't choose to destroy it, I guess. Does, does the trigger go on the stack, and then you s sacrifice... 
do they get their creatures back? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't matter. But I think they might get their creatures back while this is on the stack and while they're choosing. Not that it's relevant because it they'll get oh, they'll yeah. get them back before that's, or after that's anyway. Fair. But it doesn't that doesn't actually so matter. This is, really, this is really interesting because I don't see any situation where each player doesn't go where the other three players don't go. I destroy your creatures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? You're going to get a lot of your stuff killed. So this is six mana to s briefly steal three creatures, which is mm -hmm. sick. Yeah. So you at least, I think, get like two turns or so with them. Because you're not going to get that. You won't get to attack with them the moment that this enters because they're not going to get haste. Yeah. It doesn't say that. So six mana, grab three things, which is maybe just getting them out of the way. Draw three cards, and then you get to destroy a thing, and more than likely you're going to get three of your own things destroyed. So this is a really interesting one. Yeah. I mean, grabbing everyone's commander and yeah. picking away a keystone piece from uh, a combo or a threat of some kind for three turns buys you some time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and the artwork here is a stained glass window depicting the final confrontation between the Emperor and the renegade Primarch Horus mm. uh, aboard Horus's flagship, the... Uh, 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 I just forgot the name. <laughs> The, the the vengeful spirit, and look, Sanguinar is dead on the yeah. ground. Sanguinius, Sanguinius, dead yeah. like a chump. Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering who that was. Yeah, yeah, Sanguinius is the primarch of the Blood Angels, uh, notable for being, uh, you know, well liked by everyone, and definitely actually had wings. Yeah, had wings, uh, huh. and you know, very beautiful. Right. Uh, he was a hot boy. Yeah, so he was obviously going to die in this. Yeah. in this scenario. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when the. M uh, when the emperor and his find the shields went down aboard the vengeful spirit for reasons that have yet to be explained uh, as Horus closed in for the kill on the emperor, but the shields on his flagship were lowered, hmm. allowing the emperor and his loyal remaining loyalists to teleport aboard for a confrontation with Horus. However, they were scattered by the, by the ruinous powers. And when the emperor finally found Horus's throne room, Sanguinius already lay dead. Huh? Yep. It was basically like, he kind of took him in as like a son almost. Yeah. So like probably Sanguinius lowered the shields? No, no. Oh, okay. Sanguinius teleported in with the emperor. Oh. But yeah. Just bit it too quickly. Yeah. Okay, cool. He <laughs> didn't stand a chance. All right. Well, we've got two uh, two more cards. They're both legendary creatures because I figured saving legendary creatures for last would be interesting. And one, one last thing. Yeah. Uh, the artwork is interesting because the emperor is depicted as standing on a higher level than Horus. Yeah. So whereas this is... Traditionally, um, oh, going to the book. Where is it? Is he's on a lower? Yeah, traditionally in the artwork, the emperor is depicted standing lower than. Ah, Horace. is this a little bit of propaganda? I was going to say this. Yeah. This so this is. Well, I mean, like it sets up kind of like you know who is supposed to be more threatening and dangerous, right? Oh, so do you think right. that this is an imperium? This is piece? definitely an imperial piece right but it's one where it's like no we can't possibly depict the emperor standing lower than horus oh yeah oh interesting that would imply he is an underdog in some Damn. way right old, old full page yeah is just so and then wow. that this was again um there's a new version of this that came out i think like 10 years mm -hmm. ago or so sweet cool this card is so weird very weird all right two more legendaries at least one of whom we've heard of a couple times already but first up we have lucius the eternal Hmm. Uh, champion of Slanesh. Ah, hence the arms. Uh, three black red for a 5-3, Astartes warrior with haste, and the armor of shrieking souls. When Lucius the Eternal dies, exile it and choose target creature and opponent controls. When that creature leaves the battlefield, return Lucius the Eternal from exile to the battlefield under its owner's control. Neat. Yeah, if you defeat Lucius, you become Lucius. Is that how that works? Yeah. Oh, I would simply die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> well, I mean, do. Not by choice. Yeah. That's not, I would, I would not last very long in this, in this world. Uh, no. Nope. Nobody does. Nobody does. But uh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. This card's neat. That's super cool. So Lucius is just, he's a, he's a powerful space marine works for. Yeah. Sinesh. He was, he was uh, a captain of the emperor's children. Hmm. And like there, there were, a, I forget exactly how the structure was, but when the, you know, the space marine legions got together, they would hang out and they would, you know, duel with each other. Okay. You know, for, for the lols. And like, you know, their Karn was generally considered to be, I think, the best. But Lucius was up there and there were uh, a couple of other captains who were also considered, you know, 
very skilled in personal combat. Okay, cool. All this right. card's neat. Uh, and finally, uh, we've heard of him. We've seen his hand. It's Magnus the Red. Ooh. So three. Look at those. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Just instantly. It, thighs? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, yeah, the thighs. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Three blue red for a four or five demon Primarch with flying. Uh, unearthly power. Instance and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature token you control. Creature and token. Blade of Magnus. Whenever Magnus the Red deals combat damage to a player, create a three, three red spawn. Hmm. Ben's excited for multiple reasons now. Yeah. Spellslinger's got a new toy. Uh-huh. I mean, this empty the Warrens. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All you need to do is storm for forty-five, and then you can cast yeah. your entire deck for very cheap. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this is yeah. Enter the infinite, and you start like drawing your deck. And who's that standing behind? Most of it'll be free. Uh, Looks like yeah, like a it. It is an emp- It is a thousand sun sorcerer. I'm not sure. Doesn't look like Araman. Is there anything fancy really going on? Yeah. So am I am I correct in the scale here that Magnus in them left hand is holding this glaive mm-hmm. that we saw the command sphere, and the butt end of it is all the way back behind that. Yes. Oh so yeah. Magnus, yeah. but behind the other person. So Magnus is like Ma- twenty Ma- feet tall. Yeah. The the Primarchs were already very. You see, <laughs> you can much like orcs, right. humans in Warhammer 40k are also you can determine their rank by their size <laughs> right okay so, cool so the normal perspective- human uh, a space marine is bigger uh, a, a, um, so a when I primary say- space marine even bigger Primark very large the emperor was a very very big man <laughs> right and that's I'm, how you could tell he was in charge I'm realizing now from the rocks and everything that person is not standing behind Magnus. He's they're standing him. directly yeah. beside Yeah, the him. perspective yeah. is really interesting. Because they're lit from whatever light is down below. Yeah, but you can see a couple yeah. of their rubric, uh, rubric Marines in the back yeah. there, too. Cool. Damn. Magnus the Red. I expect to be running into you in... I, I could actually honestly see the CDH deck or yeah, getting like, into this card. What, how, not... how, are, is, is he best bros with Locust God? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Mizix is also like a really big fan of these like cards that reduce the cost of spells and whatnot. I mean, realistically, actually, we know that you get a bunch of tokens out onto the battlefield with this guy or mm-hmm. from whatever, and then Past and Flames is in this deck, mm-hmm. so you can cast pretty much your Ooh. entire graveyard probably for like pittance, right? Like, this is this card. Yeah, this is a good one. I mean, it's fortunately it's only when he deals combat damage that you're going to get a creature off of him. At first when I looked at this, I was like, is it every time you cast an instant of sorcery? But like, <laughs> there are so many easy ways to get out. Like, I mean, you think about it, even just like, uh, Krenko's command, right? Mm-hmm. Like even just simple, that's two creature tokens that that's just two free mana yep. now instantly. <laughs> right. Like very cool. This card seems good. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, different for spell singers though, to make a lot of little creatures. So, so which of the, which of the, uh, reprints do you think is are you most uh, welcome I've, to I've, see I've always loved to see a past in flames yeah that's exciting um, but I know like that the, I know that those talismans people are going to mm-hmm. be keen on them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, chromatic lantern is yeah chromatic lantern just gets is in probably everything. like the actual yeah uh, new blasphemous act is actually quite nice blasphemous act is kind of a staple mm-hmm. in commander um, so more people getting access to this I think will be great um, with you know cool new art potentially in a nice foil too if you get the the fancy the, the, version. the surge foil yeah the surge mm-hmm. foils yeah so oh, I'm actually just thinking about how nice these are this this frame style is going to look in the foil yeah yeah Whew. and then of the new ones we got so Magnus there's the Horror. Pink horror is really cool. Uh, the, f- the exalted, the exalted flamer of Zinch. So those two for sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, I I've been actually struggling to figure out who I want my mono black commander to be, and I think it might be Mortarian, mm-hmm. um, just because it's so different to take. Like, on what's actually funny is if not um, if not the commander, and I know I was talking about it, that that guy might just go in the Crick decks with all the Freck because Crick mm. is allows you to pay Frexian mana for mm. black, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So now you can also <laughs> make a bajillion like dudes and whatnot because you take a bunch of your own life. Yeah. Um, Did you, so... James? You switched back to Talisman of Indulgence. Was this one of the? No, I didn't do that. Weird. Okay. Um, I thought you had something to say. 
Sorry. Oh, yeah. But Mortar- <laughs> Mortarian seems awesome. Um, the, the, it's, it's probably of the ones, the one that I'm just like very kind of giddy about, but I will mm. definitely be getting copy of both the Flamer and the Pink Horse because Pink Horse are going to kill somebody yeah. very, yeah. Qu- very I, quickly. This deck really feels like it can get oppressive once it gets rolling, and I really enjoy the feel that with Abaddon at the head, it is this really unpredictable deck that you are trying to control. They nailed <laughs> yep. the Chaos yeah. vibe. Yeah, by yeah, by, be- by theming it uh, at at first with Cascade, mm-hmm. it's going to play differently every time. Yeah, like, yes, out of the yeah. box, it's going to be a very weird deck, and I like the feel of Abaddon as the commander, uh, trying to impose some kind of order, <laughs> and this little like wisp of blue in the deck. Yeah. Um, trying to just like no guys please just work with me here work with daddy <laughs> that that's actually really work good with abba daddy there was not new it, blue was not that deep no in in this deck yeah. it was definitely more rakdos flavored uh with blue yeah seeming like kind of like he was trying to maintain control yeah of various aspects of the game um this is well because at time of recording we yeah. obviously haven't seen any of the other decks no at no, all we but haven't. if this is indicative of what we're going to be seeing out of the other ones yeah like, there is a very real chance i will be buying all four of these I'm very excited to play with them because <laughs> this yeah, is please, wild yeah. these these seem really really good yeah, yeah. and as somebody who is like just kind of getting into 40k honestly within like the past maybe two years or so um i feel i feel good as somebody who's not deep, and how do you, how do you feel as like somebody who has been enfranchised in <sighs> both of these really for a while? Yeah, no, death to the false emperor. I'm on board with this. <laughs> happy to see Bellacor here. I'm like this. Honestly, feels um, like there are three or four ways you could take this deck and build it out. Like the demon component, I think is very interesting. Yep. The blue red spell slinger component, I think, is very interesting. The black token strategy. Yeah, the nurgly kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, I don't know. This this is this is cool to me. They made them all work well together. Mm-hmm. There's even just that little wisp of a graveyard strategy with the Hellbrute. Yeah, um, yeah. The fact that they managed to jam pack all four of the gods mm-hmm. into one deck. Yeah, couldn't really have been an easy task. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, this could have just as easily been four commander decks each of a each of the god. gods. Yeah, yeah, each of the chaos gods. Yeah. That would have been cool too. Nine decks, one for each of the traitor legions. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> how everybody. How many got... do you say there are? How many commander decks can we, <laughs> yeah. can we, yeah, can we build into this? Yeah, I feel like every everyone. I think Slanesh got a little bit of the short end of the yeah. stick. I think in some of the cards, but mm. the the ones that they did get are so like they they seem like they're very linchpin. Like the yeah, the, even the, just the the, 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 gri- the the keeper of secrets. Yes, yes, was huge, and the lord that makes uh, the cards uh, too cheaper. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. yeah, Herald solid. of Slanesh is. This is. This is rough. <laughs> yeah. This needs to. This needs to be answered. Yeah. 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 Like right away. Uh, I Your think opponent. everybody got a fair, fair shake in the deck. Yeah. Sweet. Well, there we go. There is the ruinous powers deck. The full breakdown. The full reveal release uh, for it. Hopefully, you enjoyed uh, joining us uh, for this. I had a blast. This was this was super this fun. Was so awesome. This was super yeah, super wow. fun. So uh, yeah, thank you to Cameron. Huh. And Ben. I'm not Cameron. <laughs> and I've been Graham, and James has been running tech on this. Uh, Everything that we do here at Loading Ready Run is brought to you by you. So please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run or um, just subscribe to the channel. Even that helps. If you want to throw a couple bucks into the channel on its uh, the, the super thanks or whatever, um, that's awesome too. But uh, in in whatever way you you choose to support us, even by just being here and watching, we really appreciate it. So thanks everybody for joining us for the reveal of the ruinous powers. And we'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>